Finland has just been mercilessly eliminated from the Hearthstone Global Games by Sweden. And next up, we have another elimination match. It's going to be Hungary versus Denmark, both teams sitting on one and two. They are indeed another, it's crunch time here at week four in global games and we're going to see a lot of teams eliminated, a couple of teams uh, probably qualified through to the top 16 uh, in the next phase of the global games. So it's going to be uh, a pretty cool week. We're past the, the kind of deciding, uh, you know, seeing who's kind of looking good, who's looking bad. Now it's getting definitive. Yeah. Well, we're seeing a big difference now between the format this year and the format last year. Mm. Is last year when we got to the sort of this stage, it's like, yep, another game. Oh, maybe this one doesn't matter as much as both of these teams are already through. But now every single match counts and we're starting to see teams falling by the wayside. Let's take a look at the lineups for teams Denmark and Hungary. Denmark, Twink, Crane and the Hoy, the brothers Hoy, Hoy and Nikolai Hoy. Uh, for Hungary side, it's Exego, Steve French, Zrydex, and Hadani. Yeah, for Denmark, a uh, pretty standout team, you know, uh, with Crane, Hoy and Hoy probably being uh, the most publicly well known. Uh, but then behind the scenes, Twink has just been putting in some absolute work yep. this year, getting huge amounts of HCT points uh, in a very stacked Europe lineup when you need a lot of points just to even get through to playoffs. Uh, but then on the other side for Hungary, uh, very few well-known names. I think Penadani really the standout with uh, his, what, second place at DreamHack Summer, I think, with his uh, being his biggest achievement uh, in recent memory. That's right. Uh, but even then, still uh, not the most well-known player. So a lot to prove uh, Hungary coming into the global games and not being eliminated, I guess, is a start to proving yourself. Yep. And that's going to be a big deal for this coming game. I mean, when I think of Penadani, actually, I, I think of the Hearthstone Global Games because him and Exego, his, his teammate, were part of the team yeah. last year as well. So it probably means a lot to them as their first big claim to fame. As we go forward, though, I think that we have some picks and bands ready. Let's take a look. These teams are going to be playing. First ban on both sides is the Quest Rogue. No surprise there. But the next part I was a little surprised by. There's no Druid for Hungary in the picks. Yeah, the Hunters are very obvious because, again, uh, the Quest Rogue is the best anti-control deck. The Death Rattle Hunters are kind of second best uh, in terms of just destroying those control decks. But when you look at Odd Warrior, it can actually do a pretty good job against some of the control decks. It's not like uh, some of the other control warriors in the past where it kind of comes up as bottom of the ladder in terms of how control decks bash up against each other because it can beat Malagos Druid fairly uh, consistently uh, like we did not see in the previous series <laughs> between Sweden and Finland where Orange just made very quick work of Yonetsky indeed. Uh, and we are actually going to get a repeat of that exact matchup, I believe, this series with the way uh, the Q orders have worked up. So Should we take uh, a look? Yes, let's take a look, why don't we? There you go. First up, it's going to be a Hunter Mirror, then Even Paladin versus Even Warlock, then the match that you were just mentioning. Uh, I believe it's Odd Paladin uh, against Even Warlock. Oh, sorry, it? Odd Paladin, Even Warlock. Yes. Yeah, that makes much more sense. <laughs> uh, then the same matchup, the Odd Paladin versus the Even Warlock, the other way around, and finally a Control Priest Mirror. So, yeah, that matchup that you were saying that we saw go the other way that we didn't expect earlier. Why was that? Did Orange just get a particularly good start? Yeah, I mean, like Gaskin was saying, it was what, in the top 11 cards, every single card you could want, bar wild growth, I suppose, I think, to get things going. Uh, because while it is a good matchup for the Warrior, it's not an unlosable matchup. You have to actually get the time to play your tank up hero power enough times, uh, which we can clearly see they did not have because they were dead on like turn 11 or something. Uh, but there, the, the two star players arguably uh, for each team. I suppose Hoy with his success last year in HC team maybe stands out a little bit more than Crane, but I mean, hey, they're both very well-known and well-respected members amongst the Hearthstone community. It goes back to your point about how hard Twink has been working, right? Because when you think of Denmark, you think of Hoy, you mm. think of Crane as these, as these hard workers, the real point earners, but then Twink earned more points than any of them in the uh, qualifying season for this tournament. And that goes to show a lot of hard work there. I did have a quick chat with Crane uh, just an hour or so ago, and I asked him about how their team's preparation was. You know, was it harder to come up with deck lists this week because of the expansion? And he replied, no, nope, net decking is just as easy. However, he did admit that they don't have as much experience playing these new decks. And so that may be a little bit difficult for them. Yeah, like you say, for, for these players, it's kind of been 
past achievements that have been seeing them through. Uh, Twink still, uh, you know, racking up those points, but it doesn't necessarily mean just because you are very well known that you have the time uh, to put in play with all these decks. Because again, it's the global games. You can't just play the decks that you like. Uh, you may have the uh, the classes that you enjoy playing, the very powerful classes like Druid and Warlock, just banned away. Uh, or even the Quest Rogue that we see here. So they do, in the end, have to just play the lineups that they are maybe not so comfortable with. But for these players, I think it's a, a fairly uh, understandable matchup to get things going in the Death Rattle Hunter mirror. Uh, there's kind of one card you're looking for uh, in particular, um, lest you kind of end up with it on your face, in egg <laughs> on your face. <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that, that joke. Good. I but like yeah, that. You, you want the Devil Sore Egg in this matchup to get the tempo rolling nice and quickly. There's nothing too exciting and new in these Death Rattle Hunter lists. Um, Hungary's runs two copies of Spider Bomb. That's no surprise there. We mentioned in the community show yesterday. We expect to see that in all of the Death Rattle Hunters. Um, in Denmark's list, they also run two copies of Spider Bomb and also two copies of the Giggling Inventor. Yeah, somewhat uh, to be punished, I would imagine, by the Mossy Horror uh, in Hungary's deck list, which, uh, you know, is in pretty much all versions of Hunter at this point, outside of Spell Hunter, obviously. Um, but an interesting way to start off uh, this matchup, Crane, with, you know, some of the more powerful cards in this matchup. Sure, often demands a rem uh, removal in the immediate. Uh, Carnivorous Cube as well can be really powerful, uh, even on a Houndmaster Shore, as we've seen in the global games. You can give even your own Shores rush with all the other Shores you have on board. Uh, but for Hungary, ooh, ooh. Kellis F and then also Deathstalker Rexar to follow up looks like a pretty strong couple of plays to me. Don't really want to discard any of those, though. Ideally. Not like, really. Yeah, okay, obviously Kellis F is great to draw now to play on turn two, but discarding Hellmaster Shaw and discarding Savannah High Main, that's mm. a shame. As we see, New Zealand and Singapore are still playing. They're two and two at the moment. Um, winner of that series will be three and one. Yeah, pretty grueling one. Uh, two teams, again, that maybe were not or all too high up players' predictions, but have been putting in some good work and with some very strong players, respectively, on each screen. As Denmark here, clearly just going to be, uh, you know, planning out their future turns here. They're not really going to be considering coin hero power, I wouldn't think, in this situation, but just thinking, how do we sequence this out? Are we going to be going coin Witchwood Grizzly into cube? Are we going to be going for Houndmaster Shaw as the Devil Saw Egg with Prince Kelliser is making Penadani's hand here look significantly more juicy? Right, now, Derek, this new card we've talked about a lot, the Spider Bomb. Let's take a look at it. Can Denmark play it this turn? Obviously, it's terrible as a 3-mana 2-2 two -two against Prince Kalasev. Uh Yeah, you're not really looking to coin it on this turn because it just gets traded into. Uh, so what's the plan here, then? So Spider Bomb, I mean, it's 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 a good talking point to make, actually, at this point, as the game is still a little bit slow at the start, because I think Spider Bomb has had an interesting relationship with this deck, where when people first started including it, they were like, oh my god, this card's actually really good, but we have to make the magnetic effect work. We have to build a whole mech shell around it, which is when we started seeing fireworks tech. Yeah. and the uh, the mechanical whelp yeah. as well thrown in there, sometimes with Zilliax as well. A lot of mech magnetic cards thrown in there. But then people started realizing, let's take this back to the core. Let's uh, simplify the deck list, build it all around the death rattle activations uh, on the egg more than the slightly slower mechanical whelp, and just put Spider Bomb in there because it's good. It's just a strong card. And yeah, that seems to be working out great. I will say, when you can magnetize the spider bomb onto the mechanical whelp and proc the death rattle with yeah. a terror scale stalker or something, it does go a little bit crazy. However, just as a three mana two two that deals with the minion, I mean, Obsidian Statue's death rattle is amazing. We've always agreed about that. This card has the same death rattle, and it costs three mana. So it's a strictly be better Obsidian statue. Is that what you're saying? Uh, you're no, but <laughs> along those lines, somewhere, yeah. <laughs> you're not saying yes, but you're saying yes. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Unfortunately, with an egg now on Hungary's side of the pool, that spider bomb is looking even worse than it was a moment ago because Kalaseth would just trade into it, and then the egg would be broken open for Penhadani to hit five to the face straight away. I mean, it's not necessarily so obvious as that, because breaking the egg in this matchup we know can be very powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like necessarily the autoplay that people were kind of uh, heralding it as at the start of Death Rattle Hunter's life, where when you can kill an egg, you always kill an egg. It's not necessarily uh, such a high priority target, because again, maybe they don't have the Death Rattle activators. But here for Denmark, I still do like 
Uh, the fact that Houndmaster Short just looks so favorable into this board. If they were going to go for some kind of a death rattle play, even in the worst case scenario of Terra Scale Stalker into Play Dead, you've still stuck Houndmaster Short, and then the Spider Bombs can truly start to pop off. Well, I guess were. the worst case scenario here would be a Hunter's Mark, like Hunter's Mark Candle Shot or something, just to deal with a Houndmaster Short. But in the event that that doesn't occur, this is great. Like you said, there's now a sure stuck to the board, and it now allows Crane to do what he wants with the spider bombs and trade them in any way that he wants to next turn. Um, unless something better comes up, which isn't looking likely yet. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's just looking good, right? You can trade in the spider bomb into the Keleseth, maybe even after proccing the egg to stop uh, any more death rattle activation from happening. Yeah. But I don't know, after you've seen one death rattle activated, because on this turn, it's likely to be what? Just Terra Scale Stalker for Hungary. They don't really have another play. Uh, but if they had a play dead, they'd probably do it on the same turn, right? Just to go super wide on the board and start blowing out the game as quick as possible. Yeah, that's true. And so for Crane, maybe he's thinking, there are no more death rattle activators, so I don't necessarily want to kill the egg. So you can take the, uh, the chance of a one in three for a disaster. Yeah and just go for this. Play the Spider Bomb, charge it into Kaliseth, hope for the best. But having said that, what is your Shaw actually doing this turn? Maybe you just give yourself a guaranteed effect of killing off something good yeah. at least. Then your opponent is left in the worst case scenario with mm. two five fives on board, which is bad, don't get me wrong. That's not a good <laughs> scenario to find yourself in, but when your opponent goes egg, uh, sorry, Kaliseth, egg, Terra Scale Stalker, you're always going to be in a bad situation. It's really down to Crane here to find a way to get back into this game. Unfortunately for him, it's not looking easy. Mm -hmm. Those two spider bombs are just clogging up the hand at the moment, and that's one of the issues with the card. It is a three mana two two. That's that's not good in this situation. Yeah. Can be good later after a Kalisov buff Quickly. when stats get a little bit more important. But for now, again, three mana two two just doesn't do it, and he's going to go for this potential disaster. That is the disaster. It hits oh the egg. Houndmaster Shaw can't do anything. And now Hungary have two 5-5s five and one 4-4, four four, all of which can attack immediately wherever they want to go. And I think Crane's beautiful little beardy face uh, perfectly sums up what just happened there. He knows, yep, we kind of just got got in this scenario. Uh, the Houndmaster Shaw can die here, push a whole bunch of damage to face. And even if through some miracle Denmark had managed to clear up this whole great big messy mess, there's still a Deathstalker Rex, yeah. so you can go for the value plan for Hungary. This does beg the question though, like you said, last turn, what did Shaw really achieve? Maybe it was better to hit the egg with Hellmaster Shaw and then guarantee you're getting, getting rid of a 4-4 or a 5-5 five five for the Spider Bomb. It was definitely worth consideration, which is why they took so long. But then if you actually look at the situation, then in the best case scenario, they still have 9-9 nine nine of stats on the board next turn because you kill off a Devil Saw and they still have the Terra Scale Stalker, which isn't that good. Uh, whereas I think Crane was realizing that we're in a bad situation. We yep. need to take risky plays, which is what they did there. Because then 66% of the time, they're only left with one good minion yep. on the board, which is actually not that bad. Maybe sometimes, their follow-up's very weak. Sometimes that's just a 4-4 four four as well, which doesn't actually do Exactly, that yeah. Then they, you know, your sure is dying off, but you can then start to pull back the board with Witchwood Grizzly, Spider Bomb into Terra Scale. It's salvageable. So I do think this was the best play from Denmark, given the situation, but again, didn't work out. Just a pretty interesting turn to think about. Quickly. Unfortunately, though, Crane's turns aren't getting any better. He's going to drop Witchwood Grizzly. That's, that's okay. It's a 5-mana 3-9. It's fine. It absorbs two of these attacks. Um, it's not great though, is it? And now because Mossy Horror has been buffed by Keleseth, it kills off three attack minions now, right? That's just how numbers work. Mm, no, no, Darren. Oh, That's right. not how numbers work. Yeah, I thought I'd got it this time. Back to school with you. <laughs> Please, no. <laughs> so just really wondering here, how do I lose in this scenario for Penedani, <laughs> making yeah. sure he's not too vulnerable to uh, Deathstalker Rexar, obviously, which, uh, you know, he hasn't necessarily done, but I guess what if uh, Rexar does come down here from their opponents, they're just dead anyway. Right, right? Yeah, so, what does yeah. Rexar yeah. actually doesn't make any difference. Crane has two health. In fact, Rexar is the only play to heal him back up. It's no good. Crane concedes, and Hungary take their first win of this vital series. Once again, 
this is lose and out for these teams. Not a good position to be in. And especially for a team like Denmark, who we would generally in the Hearthstone community, we'd consider one of the most respected teams, I think, uh, in Hearthstone. Yeah, they are a very strong team indeed, both in the global games and also out of the global game yeah. with, uh, you know, just players from, uh, sorry, from Denmark uh, being very powerful, like we see Hoy and Crane here. And also the uh, Copenhagen Flames, a very strong team in Hearthstone at the moment with Twink, I believe, on their team. They've picked right. up uh, Faeli, I think, as well. So, you know, a lot of respectable players uh, on that team as well as uh, Fury Hunter, the player who actually beat uh, Penadani in... Uh, Dreamhack uh, summer earlier on this year. So a very strong contender, but again, looking like it could actually just be over for them uh, in what is a very uh, even series, I think we can say, in terms of the matches, because we've got two mirrors with Death Rattle Hunter mirror and Control Priest mirror, and then we've got Odd Paladin versus Even Lock on both sides, the same matchup just flipped around being played twice. So the only real uh, deciding point, I would say, in this series is the Odd Warrior for Hungary up yeah. against the Malagos Druid for Denmark, which kind of just puts them even further behind because that's not a good matchup. Yeah, I will say, looking at my notes now, like with Hungary winning the first game, it's looking really good for them. Yeah. Uh, as you were saying, the matchups do tend to edge slightly in Hungary's favor moving forward from this position. So it's down to Denmark to find a way back in. Um, the Denmark community, not just the Hearthstone Global Games community, but just as a whole, uh, they're a pretty big one out and about at the events. We saw them at various dream hacks, etc. around. Um, Fury Hunter is the big name that yeah. springs to mind that isn't on the team. Winner of Dreamhack Summer and has also been making a splash uh, in other events. He's been He's most well known for creating the Odd Warrior of the previous meta. Uh, but there are a lot of members of the of the Denmark community. There are a lot of good players up for the voting system. And uh, it's just going to be a shame if they're out of the tournament already. Yeah, it, it works out a little bit, unfortunately, for Fury Hunter, like you said, where I believe the voting for HGG had closed just before yeah, that's right. uh, he won his big event in DreamHack Summer. And he knew when he's up against, like you said, the Brothers Hoy, Crane, players of that caliber, his likelihood to get in was pretty low, to be honest. I mean, let's be honest, right? If you're voting for your HGG team and you get to, to make, you know, three votes and you see two players that look identical <laughs> in your vote, you probably vote for both of them, right? Like, I mean, Hoy is already phenomenal at Hearthstone. Yeah. Obviously, he made Worlds last year, but, like, that just guaranteed his entry into the team, right? And, and his brother, Nikolai Hoy's entry into the team. Yeah, and Nikolai Hoy is kind of a cool story, actually, because obviously everyone knows Hoy Hoy, uh, Frederick Hoy, the, the more famous of the, the brothers Hoy. Yeah, Ahoy Hoy. Um, oh, no. But uh, his brother, I think uh, me and Lorinda got the pleasure of casting one of his first ever forays into competitive Hearthstone in WSG, I one remember. of the qualifiers, uh, uh, late last year when he played surprisingly well. He was playing a full aggro lineup because admittedly, he didn't have all the cards. <laughs> uh, you know, he didn't have the cards to play the more popular decks at that point, which were a little bit slower, I believe, towards the end of last year. Um, but he played them very well. He qualified in pretty uh, convincing fashion. And while he didn't have the greatest success later on, we were just pretty impressed that, you know, the both Hoys here were out putting in some pretty good results. And since then, he's really kind of turned it up. He's been getting some good ladder finishes, racking up a decent amount of points. So uh, showing that it's it's not just on the one side of the family. I remember that we were in China with Hoy, Hoy Hoy, hmm. Frederick Hoy, uh, and he was watching his brother in his first big tournament, which I think was the, the finals of that WSG or something. And it was funny for us because we were watching that stream and then like went for breakfast the next morning. And it's, it genuinely looks like the same person as there. Those two look frighteningly similar to each other. Yes. They do. But in terms of their play styles, like we said, a little bit different, more aggressive for the, the Nikolai Hoy rather than the, the Frederick Hoy. And also for uh, the, the, the Hoy Hoy, once again, Frederick Hoy, a, a big... Uh, we need to get used to calling him Frederick. We should <laughs> just call him Frederick for this <laughs> tournament, yeah. Um, but for him, a uh, big upturn recently in joining SKT Gaming, I believe, alongside yes. his longtime teammates, Surrender and Zixo. Um, Always good to see that the, you can have these practice groups, these good friends sticking together for so long in Hearthstone when, you know, various teams have disbanded or changed rosters throughout their history. But the, the power of friendship can shine through. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen that absolutely. And it's great just, again, at various events, seeing Zixo and Surrender and Hoy interacting with each other. It's, it's always nice. They are clearly very good friends. And, uh, yeah, uh, they've managed to get on yet another team together. So, yeah, all in all, with, you know, crane on complexity and everything. We really can't say enough nice things about Team Denmark. 
again, as one of the more well-respected teams in the Hearthstone Global Games, it would be a shame to see them eliminated here. But things aren't looking good against Hungary, who aren't as well known, but seem to have the better end of the deal in these coming matches. Yeah, even in the next couple of games in this series, still looking pretty bad uh, for Denmark on the odd Paladin up next against Hungary's even Warlock. Not all too much has changed, I don't think, in that matchup because you're still very weak to the Defiles, the Hellfires, the Board Clears, as well as just powerful early game minions they can throw down like the Volga Homunculus. Even something like a Sun Fury Protector can do a good job of contesting the board. And then after that, it's the Malagos Druid up against the Odd Warrior, which again, while uh, Orange took that in pretty convincing fashion last series, is not the matchup that you are looking for whatsoever. Uh, so Denmark here are going to have to be playing out of their minds if they're going to take this back as finally uh, the latest episode of Talkstone can end <laughs> and we can jump back into the series. Denmark aren't running that many new cards in their Odd Paladin. They're running two copies of Glowtron and obviously two copies of Giggling Inventor. That card seems to have made its way everywhere. Um, not necessarily going to help them all that much against even Warlock. And these even Warlocks on both sides actually aren't running any new cards whatsoever. Hungary's is running one copy of Mossy Horror to counter the Giggling Inventors, but nothing from the Boomstay Project. Yep, and it, this is uh, kind of what I've been talking about with some players with respect to the Boomstay is, like you say, a lot of the cards that people expected would come through haven't found their place yet. Uh, and I think that's because Boomstay, a lot of the cards when they were announced, just look weird. You don't really know what to do with them or where they fit into the meta, which are the best kind of cards, in my opinion, in Hearthstone. I really prefer the the weird cards where you have to find their spot rather than, uh, say, the tribal cards like, uh, you know, the mechs and the murlocs and stuff. I think it really tests the deck building of players to find where these slightly weirder cards find their spot. And while at the moment the metagame is looking somewhat similar, not all too many new archetypes, uh, given their time, the real uh, mad uh, geniuses of Hearthstone will find <laughs> those new crazy deck lists if given enough time. Let me think. Now looking at the start of this game, uh, Zhrydex has the Defile. He has a Mountain Giant. Mm -hmm. He now has a Mossy Horror as well, also going to be pretty strong against this Paladin. Seems to have a lot of the tools that Hungary needs to last this one out, whereas Denmark haven't really drawn anything that helpful. I guess Corridor Creep is pretty good. I mean, Blessing of Might's pretty good, actually. You can just start hitting your opponent. If you go for Blessing of Might on this turn, you're not all that weak to Defile. Okay. Um, you could potentially go for it next turn, I suppose. It feels so bad here, spending one mana in an mm. odd deck rather than using your hero power. Yeah, and so what? If you go Blessing of Might this turn, hero power next turn, you're obviously missing out on an entire hero power in that scenario, Yeah. Uh, with the trade-off being a little bit of extra damage, and you're less vulnerable to Defile <laughs> immediately. And that is big. That is actually Which is big. But then, uh, if your opponent has to Defile this turn, it's kind of better for you, because then they can't go tap into Defile tap on the following turn, if you see what I mean. Yep. Uh, it slows down their giant progress, at least. Uh, and it makes your Corridor Creeper a little bit cheaper. The big question about the Defile, though, is when when do Hungary actually play it? Like, the, maybe they want to save it until turn four, going into the Fungal Mancer or the level up turn. And then the question for Hoy is, to what extent do I play around Defile? Like, is there any point even? If they're going to play it at some point anyway, may as well try and bait it out early. Yeah, and so there for Hoy, like, if the Defile comes down on the next turn when you have a 4-1 and 4 one ones uh, on the board. That's pretty good for Hungary. That gives them a good board to defile. But here they're just going for it anyway right now, thinking this is a scary enough board because of Raid Leader, just the damage that's coming through, because they want the mana on the following turns to go coin Drake into Drake, perhaps. Um, but it was a very aggressive use of the defile there. Thankfully for them, however, <laughs> Team Denmark have literally nothing to play outside of that hero power. Yeah, that's really not the start no that wonder. that Hoi wants at all. Um, they go, they're going to take the time with the turn. They want to at least give the illusion that they've got some decisions. But unfortunately, Nikolai Hoi, you said that he's very apt at playing these aggro decks, but can't really do much if you don't draw the cards. 
still really interested in that Defile play from Hungary because basically I think what you want to do more than anything else is set up for playing around Fungal Mancer. Yep. That's what you need to do because that's how you can be blown out of the game. So you want to have as clear a board as possible going into their turn four, which means maybe you can save the Defile for your turn four. You can save yep. it going into their turn so they can't play Fungal Mancer is obviously kind of step one in that process. But then if they have Blessing of Might, or if they have Raid Leader, you're taking a big old chunk of damage in the meanwhile, which with no healing in hand, maybe is too much. Maybe you're leaving yourself vulnerable to Leroy then instead. Whereas with this play, they're saying two Twilight Drakes on the board should be enough to fight back on board um, so that Fungal Mancer cannot connect on this turn. It's going to be tricky, though. They can only deal with one of these 1-1s. One -ones. The next turn, they can only deal with two out of potentially three. Mm, I guess it's okay. Mm. I've talked myself around a little bit. And this is like the best case scenario for Hungary, where they had literally nothing to yeah. play on turn yeah. three outside of the hero power. My, I mean, Mossy Hara is obviously going to be good against mm -hmm. all yeah, yeah. Paladin, unless there's been a Fungal Mancer or a level up, which kind of spoils the point, because oh, as you were saying, they want to be playing around that Fungal Mancer going into turn five, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do that. So now, Denmark are going to pull the trigger on that Blessing of Might and push as much damage as they can. However, by a similar metric here, while we said they want to play around Fungal Mancer, and that should be their first port of call. It's not necessarily the worst situation ever here if a Fungal Mancer does come down next True. turn. They could go trade in and heal their minion back up with Shroombra, so it's not at that annoying three health total so as to die to either a Fungal Mancer or a level up. Um, they're not under so much pressure that they have to Shroombra their own face, I think, in this scenario. They should be able to tap through to some kind of taunt or healing later on in their deck. And if they were afraid of Fungal Mancer or a level up, a 4-4 and a 4-7 are very annoyingly statted minions uh, for the way that trades in for Hoy. Is there any consideration of tapping here, or do you think Dreadx is just trying to decide between the two 4-drops? It's definitely between the two 4-drops. Like, yes, you can hit the one of Defile as the absolute nut draw, but even then, you're out of Defiles and your opponent can just play... I don't know, Giggling Inventor or Hero yeah. Power 3 drop. Like, there's, there's still a bunch of sh stuff. Even deciding do. between the 4 drops was difficult, though, because even, <laughs> even Shroom Brewer, like, do you heal the Twilight Drake? Do you heal the face? Like, even that's not an easy decision. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm still kind of tempted by the Shroom Brewer. Like, the obvious thing they're saying here is, I mean, I mean, it's not even a stronger play onto the board because you kind of develop less stats, if you will, because you give the Drake plus four health. But they're saying we need this for face, I think, basically, or maybe we can use it on the following turn. Um, I still think that with the actual plays that Hoy, uh, Nikolai Hoy has available to him, uh, maybe the Shroom so would have been better. We've spent the whole game talking about Fungal Mancer on turn five up until mm. this point. But now, I mean, and again, I'm saying this with full knowledge of Hungary's hand. Isn't Giggling Inventor looking strong here? That's clearly what they're leaning towards. You need to protect your minions here, I guess, because, well, what does Fungal Mancer really do here? You can exactly. take a, a value trade, or sorry, a trade up into a 4-3, uh, which is pretty good, I guess. But if you can stick down some buffs on Divine Shielded Annoyatron, exactly. that feels like a little bit more pressure to me. There's no Mossy Horror coming down just yet, so they're going to have one turn to buff some things up. Uh, now Zyrodex is going to want to play that Shroom Brewer, I'm sure. The Corridor Creeper is interesting there. I can't help but feel that that's maybe a bit of an overcommittal into Mossy Horror the following turn, because Denmark can only buff two of these minions with Giggling Inventor, unless this is the play around so file. I mean, you're always weak to Mossy Horror in some way, right? Yeah. And this, I think, is, a, is the best play around it that you can make, um, giving them the option to buff up both an Annoyatron and the Corridor Creeper. Okay obviously pulls both of them out of range. So uh, it's definitely a good point to bring up, but with two giggling, sorry, two giggling inventors in hand, you are supremely weak to Mossy Horror. Yeah. So now Hungary are trying to work out how they can play around Fungal Mancer and which the best target is. And again here for Hungary, if the Shroombra had been played last turn, they would have had 
the, the, it would have been pretty much exactly the same, except they would have had a 4-4 and a 4-7 instead of a 4-3 and a 4-7, which would have meant the 3-1-1s couldn't have traded into the Shroombra last turn, so they would have had more minions stuck around. This is just a board clear, right? The 2-1 the and the 1-2 oh, go into the Twilight Drake, then buff up the Corridor Creeper and the Divine Shield. The Anoyatron trades with the Drake, and the Corridor Creeper trades with the 4-4. And that's Do you want to trade, though? Good question. Good question. And that's something that I'm sure Nikolai Hoy is going to be discussing with his teammates right now. Can <laughs> he afford to just push everything into the face? I don't know the oh, Danish wonder. translation, but I'm sure that the conversation will be something along the lines of, Me go face? It's just smork, isn't it? Yeah. Not the best impression, gotta be honest, but you get the gist. I must move quickly. All right, looks like they are going face then with this play. Like at some point with this hand, they need to start going on the aggressive. I think they've got taunts protecting their minions. Um, you can push the damage here and it is a very awkward board to clear here. So uh, eked out um, the Hooked Reaver, though. That's the only issue that I can think of. Mm. Yes, I suppose. But, you know, first of all, maybe they don't have it. You can't play around cards for the rest of the game because maybe they have Defile, maybe they have Hellfire, maybe they have a whole bunch of other nonsense that could pretty much lock you out of the game. I should point out there's no silence in Denmark's odd paladin. So getting through this Reaver does just mean trading all of the relevant cards in. As Hellfire, I believe, would have been a full board clear here um, if Zrydex had uh, managed to find it. So this was obviously a weakness of the play, relatively speaking. Um, but this is, uh, while bad for Denmark, think how bad Mossy Horror could have been with this hand, with Corridor Creeper and both Giggling Inventors. Yeah. They could have just been completely well, blown out of the game. The thing is, this turn, what is Denmark going to do? Well, they're going to play Giggling Inventor and Hero Power, probably, at that point. Yeah. Uh, Mossy Horror would have cleared everything. So the timing of that Mossy Horror is mm. very difficult. Either way, the Hooked Reaver is still sitting in the hand, still ready to be a uh, very oppressive 4-mana 7-7 seven, seven Torn. And I think for Hungry, while well, you could have put your opponent on having the second Shroom because again, they played very awkwardly in the first few turns. You know they run two of them because it's open deck list. I still think the Mossy Horror was right there because if you go all in on Hooked Reaver, um, and, you know, they just trade up into it or they play a Blessing of Might or something uh, pretty devastating like that. Uh, that's bad. Like, Hooked Reaver you want to play after you've cleared up the board to lock out the game. Okay. I think. No, sure. I can get behind that. Um, although now, what other choice is there? Yeah, well, it's an odd turn, so you're probably tapping unless you're really afraid of just dying on this turn. Um, but what? looking at how the damage comes through, if you don't tap here... Um, Looking to be in pretty big trouble anyway, because your only other realistic play is Hooked Reaver Doomsayer, I suppose, because you'd rather have a clear board um, at this point. Worth noting, there's no Leroy Jenkins yeah. in Denmark's on Paladin either. Oh, okay. Leroy Jenkins has sort of not made the cut in many cases recently, thanks to the new additions to on Paladin. So I think this play is mostly safe. The most damage should come from a level up here, which is only six going to the face. There it is. The, the two silver hand recruits plus the noise from trade into the 7-7. Seven, seven. So yeah, six damage can go face or six damage can go into the Doomsayer. That's actually not enough yeah. to prevent the board clear. And I don't think Denmark can prevent this board clear in Let any way whatsoever. Is there no way it works out? Trade, trade, trade. No, because you exactly kill the, mm -hmm. the hooked breather, don't you? Oh, it's so close. So that then leads into Hungary to put up another taunt, which we've already seen. Denmark have no way of dealing with, yeah. I think Hungary have just about gotten there. And so what's Nikolai Hoy thinking here? Do you just, well, he has to be considering, do you just push the six to face? You get them down to four, which is so low, but I just can't imagine that's actually the play, to be honest. You have a relatively decent value hand, like you can just start pressing those hero powers, turn off to turn, pray they don't have Gul'dan, and hope that that gets you there in the end. Wow, going to just push as much damage as possible. Amazing. As uh, Singapore just took down New Zealand. Singapore sitting on three wins in the Hearthstone Global Game Swiss. The board has been cleared. 
Nikolai Hoy has nothing, and Tridex has a Lich King, which, again, knowing Denmark's deck list, we know there should not be a way past this. It's such a, a tough play for Hoy, because again, maybe this happens. Maybe your opponent doesn't have a taunt, and you top deck Vine Cleaver, and that's your out. It very nearly came true. Or <laughs> maybe they're thinking, uh, because I'm giving up board control here anyway, whether I play uh, level up or not, does level up get any better Let than this? Me. Because your opponent probably on that turn plays two four drops, right? And they start going wide on the board. They can kill off all your one ones every single turn. And then level up doesn't get any better. Could could Denmark consider just slamming Vine Cleaver into the Lich King? You they take so oh. much damage. They take 24 damage over the next two turns from the Lich King alone. <laughs> but start dying so quickly. But maybe then. that's just one of the only ways they win. No, this isn't a bad board they've managed to develop here anyway. I think I prefer this because then again, you you know you demand your opponent to have a way to deal with this one one, mm -hmm. uh, which whew, oh. that may just do it. You can play. Swampoos to kind of make the defile. defile a little bit more juicy. Does it matter too much though? Like just defile to clear the one ones, then trade the Lich King into the. Yeah, it's not great. It's I, not great. You're right. I think I prefer the ooze. But then you're giving up your defense against Vine Cleaver, which does actually get pretty scary. Uh, so maybe you go Frostmourne the one one, Lich King kill off the six six. <laughs> um, that's not great either. Oh, wait, you could go Acidic Swampoo's Defile, heal up your Lich King with Shroom Brewer, then trade into the 6-6. Six, six. Hungary haven't even played a Homunculus yet, so it's not like next turn they could drop the Lich the, um, drop Gul'dan and get some taunts. No, That's but problem. I think they're thinking hopefully we've secured the board by that point. And even if yeah. they don't, they can just go uh, Giant Sun Fury or something like that. This is still closer than you'd expect it to be. Instead, going with the old taunty ruse strategy here, and that uh, Arch and Protector putting in so much work here. I'm surprised they didn't go for the Defile in addition. They'd have had to play it after the Mountain Giant, weakening their defenses. And wow, Divine Favor picked up by Denmark. That's going to be drawing a lot of cards. And I think you just play it before the Vine Cleaver here, right? You draw one less card, but having seven more mana to maybe play a Fungal Mancer, a level up. I mean, Who it, knows what it's else? still three mana draw five. I think you just go ahead yeah, and yeah. that now and see what you get. What a top deck there for the for the Danes. Raid leaders not Raid bad leaders, at all. very inviting. Yeah, you can go, uh, no real other buffs, but yeah, you definitely go Raid Leader here to sweeten up the trade somewhat. Now that Blood Knight can go straight into the Lich King. The rest of the minions can deal with the Mountain Giant. Yeah, and then you just go wide and mm. pray for no defile, I think. Because even if you waste all your minions here, if you're not dead, you can just divine favor again. And you are so close yeah. to killing your opponent here. They have to have another taunt or a heal, or they're just dead to the Vine Cleaver next turn. Yeah. But it is there, however, for uh, Zrydex. He could go for a multitude of plays here. Something like uh, Defile, Shroom Brewer, his own face looks fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe even throw down a Doomsayer. Why not? Just try and secure the board so you can go Gul'dan on the following turn. He's going to have to play the Ooze the following turn, though, if the Vine Cleaver comes down. Oh, maybe Gul'dan's fine because of the five armor you get from it. But it's Yeah, you get afraid of level up then. Though, Hungary right? have been on a knife edge for quite a while this game. Looking at whether he has the possibility to just not use the Defile here, maybe kill off the Raid Leader. But again, this is too much damage. You are too low. And this is kind of the only play available to Zrydex here, I think. And as you said, with the Doomsayer as well. So the Vine Cleaver, even the minions develop, so I'm going to be sticking around. Oh, yes. And then uh, next turn, you know, you don't even have to go for uh, Blood Reaver Gul'dan. If you really want to kill off the Vine Cleaver, you could just go... Uh, Swamp who's Frostmourne. There'd be nothing on the board. You can stop getting some damage to face, I suppose. Problem it's, with that, it's not doing much. It, but. The problem with that is that there's a second Vine Cleaver in the deck, and if that was played, that would just win the game at that wonder. point, right? Because Vine Cleaver now puts your deck down to four. Yes. Ooze isn't healing yeah. at all. So I think next turn, Drydex has to play Gul'dan. 
I think that's the only safe play against what Denmark has remaining. Yeah, and he, he probably will, I guess. And again, there's no charge minions in the deck, so Let apart from think. weapons being played, there's mm. no way of generating burst damage with nothing already on the board. Denmark here clearly considering not even playing the Vine Cleaver because they know if they are met with the use, it gets a little bit scary. They could just dump their bad cards here and Divine Favor back up. Mm. Um, or even go Vine Cleaver, Divine Favor just for one card, but... They'd be better off playing the Divine Favor next turn though, right? Probably, yeah. Just dump the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Making their opponent think that they have a Corridor Creeper as well by going for the hero power here, even though we can see it obviously serves absolutely no benefit. Shredix back down to four health. And again, yes, he could ooze away the weapon, yeah. but that would mean the second weapon would be lethal. He has to go with Gul'dan. It's the only way that Hungary definitely survive into the next turn, even though all they get from it is one measly 4-4. Four, four. And even in the worst case scenario of something like attack face, hero power, um, lost in the jungle, and then level up, you have the Doom Pact. Really even if you don't find any other board clear, you can just destroy most of your deck. Hope you don't get fatigued at that point, I guess, by the odd paladin. Doom Pact, Goons, hero power. Sure, yeah, yeah. Not bad at all. Converting stored energy. As the the good old divine favor, which has now drawn what, nine cards this game, <laughs> uh, yeah, like I was saying, fatigue. Like obviously, with the the second divine favor being played, not even a consideration. Purifies more. Probably the best mall in this scenario. Maybe plus attack would be good. Um, but getting that survivability against a Hellfire, because now you've seen both Defiles, Divine oh, Shield becomes say, yeah. really good. Like, really good. Neither Hellfire has been drawn yet. Yeah. I mean, clearly kind of considering on this turn, because you can attack in with Divine Cleaver, and they can go Purify Small to just try and set up for huge amounts of damage on the following turn, and they're going for it here. They know that an Ooze could come down at some point anyway. So they, Why not make still, this board survivable? They're going to draw the second Vine Cleaver at some point anyway. Looks to me like maybe it could be some kind of uh, team communication breakdown there with... You think they were meant to play it? Uh, well, they were clearly considering it. It was picked up and dropped down twice. Nikolai Hoy, I would imagine, is the, uh, the pilot they didn't even in this situation. Oh, yeah. So, I, okay. Oh, clearly that was clearly a roping out issue, yeah. Um, as I would imagine, you know, this is what strong communication feels like in the HGG, where most teams will say, you can give your input, but the pilot makes the decision. They have final say every time because they're good with the deck. That's why they're piloting it, as Nikolai Hoy is with these style of aggressive decks. Um, but I would imagine there, there was one player saying, no, we don't do it. We just hero power. We just hero power. And they couldn't decide and ended up making the worst of both worlds play. <laughs> as this couldn't really have gone much worse. He lost the taunt as well. Losing uh, the homunculus is big. Yeah, homunculus losing... Uh, I suppose losing the... Dread Infernal. Or yeah, the Dread Infernal. I was going to say the Skulking guys to get rid of Blessing of oh, Might sure. is kind of a thing, but not that important. So now Denmark have drawn the second level up. Um, it turns out the Purifier's Maul wouldn't have made much of a difference last turn. But using the Hero Power would have meant that Hungry milled two more cards. Yep. Maybe there's a world in which that makes a difference, although Denmark are already so far ahead in fatigue or behind in fatigue, whichever way you want to describe it. I don't think milling two more cards would have mattered. So ultimately their breakdown in communication doesn't seem to have affected them too badly. So now, how all in? Nikolai Hoy want to go because he could go Hero Power, Corridor Creeper, Void Ripper, Purify as Maul, and then set up for the level up next turn. And he's got to be thinking that, right? Your opponent has run out of Defiles. They just burned a Dread Infernal. Yep. They only have Hellfire. How do they deal with a whole bunch of Divine Shields? The answer, I think, is they kind of just don't. Like, here it would have to be Spellbreaker, Spellstone, Hero Power as your best option. The holding back the Void Ripper to flip up the Corridor Creeper. Uh, okay, that sequencing must have been wrong because that Void Ripper just could have Divine Shield. Oh, no, 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 because then the Ooze would have flipped as well and you wouldn't oh, okay. have been able to kill it off with the weapon. Okay, yep, yep. My mistake. So here, if there was a Hellfire, it would leave your opponent with only... Denmark would have only two 1-1s. 
Um, yes. After the, obviously the the suck hero power comes in as well. Spellstone's there too. Yeah, so could be some pretty big clears. I mean, even just Spellbreaker, Spellstone, hero power heals you up a bit, gets a minion on board. Uh, it's not the only play because we could see Vulgar Homunculus into Spellstone, but like, I think clearing these Divine Shields off the board is pretty important. The issue with the so hero power and the Spellstone is that they have decisions. life steal. Not, they don't like gain life through the effect. And what that means is that if they play one of these spells on a Divine Shield, yeah, they don't actually get the health gain. Yeah. They actually have to deal all the damage. That's oh, how yeah, it still works. Yeah, good point. I must and that now. may not have gone to plan there. Flipping the Corridor Creeper, because now you can't actually deal with it. Yeah, I mean, maybe this was their plan, right? Like, if you weren't going to go for that, you'd have to silence a 1-1, one, one, which does play around level up, which your opponent probably has at this point. Hmm. But now... Second Vine Cleaver, damage uh, is about to start coming attacking. in. That's just lethal. With level up and blessing of might, that's 6-9 damage. Oh after. my goodness, they got there! They actually got there! That was such a close game there towards the end. And it feels like, to me, Hungary... I mean, there were a lot of different lines they could have gone for, but I think they realized with that uh, silencing of the Corridor Creeper not going quite to plan, Yeah. Uh, they could maybe have played around that a little bit better. Uh, but again, very close in the end. Well, now, Denmark are back in the running. They are indeed. After winning an unfavorable matchup, things aren't looking as horrific for them as they were earlier. I cannot believe they won that for a long time. That game was never over by any means, right? But for a long time, it did look like Hungary were just, just about stable enough to survive, especially the time when they played that Lich King after clearing the board. That looks like it was good enough to survive, but clearly it wasn't as Nikolai Hoy got there. In the end, we are going to go to a short break now, but the score is one on one. Losing team is eliminated from the Hearthstone Global Games. We'll be back right after this. We're back. It's one on one between Hungary and Denmark. Um, Denmark just won a slightly unfavorable matchup in what turned out to be a very close, very long game, but yeah. exciting all the way through. And now things are looking pretty even as we go into the next game because they're not looking odd anymore. <laughs> nice one, mate. Uh, as like you said, uh, it's a little bit more even, a little bit more rounded up after they won the unfavorable. They have uh, the same matchup from the other way around uh, as the fourth game that we have in this series where they will, uh, Denmark sorry, will be playing the even lock and uh, Hungary will be on the odd paladin. But before we get there, we have to go through another match, which is probably going to be a bit of an ordeal uh, for Hungary to say the least on the Malagos Druid up against the odd warrior That's for still Hungary. Still looking odd, actually, Darug. Oh, right. Ruin your job. There, but yeah. Dang it, you got me. But yeah, we saw this matchup earlier. We've mentioned this already. Orange managed to win as the Malagos Druid against Odd Warrior. We sort of decided that's because they, he got such a good start during almost every card he needed mm -hmm. in the first 15 or so cards. Maybe it won't go this way this time. In theory, you'd have to expect the Warrior to be somewhat favorite here. And let's actually take a look at the uh, Odd Warrior list. Uh, up here for Hungary. It's not the most standard one. A couple of interesting tech cards thrown in there, I guess, if you want to call them that. Uh, with uh, Faceless Manipulator in there, not something we're seeing all too much of in Odd Warrior at the moment. Uh, one Hatchling isn't common either. I think it's making its way into a few of their, uh, most of them actually, I would say. At least okay. one, just to give you a little bit more of a fatigue plan against the control matchups. But here Hungary is clearly going very much in on the fatigue plan because at any point later on in the game, they could go for Diahorn Hatchling into Faceless Manipulator to, you know, try and just get a situation where they never ever fatigue. Obviously, this is not the matchup where they're going to be doing that because Twink should be drawing an awful lot more cards than their opponent. Yeah. Uh, but as you can clearly see there, the game plan very much already laid out by Denmark in keeping Malfurion the Pestilent, which is uh, an interesting talking point in Malagos Druid, as some players I've seen say you keep it in pretty much every matchup because the Death Knights are so powerful with your late, uh, your late game plan changes so drastically when you can go for three damage to face every single turn. And so while I do really like the keep there from Twink in going for the Malfurion damage to face uh, every turn plan, the rest of his hand has not shaped out all too well. But the Mafurian keep, as you said, game plan is there, and that game plan is smork as much as possible with that Mafurian hero power. Try and keep that armor as low as possible. 
Exego has Reckless Flurry in his opening hand. That's sort of just an unplayable card in this matchup. Um, yes, not not necessarily because you can see situations where um, if your opponent, if you build up so much armor uh, that your opponent, even when they go for their Malagos combo, doesn't quite kill off all of it, you could go for a Reckless Flurry to clear off like a Malagos and a Floop. That is very unlikely to happen, I will grant you. It's most of the time not going to be played in this matchup, but uh, you shouldn't write it out quite yet. One thing that was a little bit different about Orange's Malagos Druid that we saw earlier, and he said that this was from Hunter Race, was the fact that he was including Azalina in his list, which may have been a way of generating just a little bit extra value after using up the Malagos damage. However, Denmark's Druid is not running Azalina. It's pretty much as standard a Malagos Druid list as you can get at the moment, which does mean it's going to struggle when the burst damage is gone. Does want a copy of the Lich King? I guess that could do something. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think this is pretty much the exact list that I've been jamming on ladder as well recently. Um, and it is a pretty miserable matchup against the Odd Warrior, especially when uh, Exego clearly knows the game plan here of, I don't know, anti-smork, if you'll call it that, <laughs> with uh, the hero power every single turn. If you thought Taunt was cheap, my goodness, is Tank Up cheap. But, uh, what about Taunt and Tank Up and Lifesteal? Is that cheap? Thankfully, they haven't printed that card yet. Um, I mean, Zilliax plus the hero power pretty much does the job. <laughs> it's making my blood boil already, Falcone, just thinking about it. <laughs> it looked like Hungry grabbed Reckless Flurry by accident there. <laughs> that would have been a disaster. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be a little bit of a misclick, <laughs> to say the least, I think. Um, yeah, interesting selection here. I guess you go for the Omega Defender. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, what I mean, if you can play it into your opponent's... I don't know, it's never going to contest a Malagos. I was going to say, because it gets up to like 12 attack here, it does perfectly contest a Malagos. But on the turn they're playing Malagos, they're pretty much always going to be playing Swipe yeah. at the same time. So it's just the best card. It's just It is good. just the best card. I mean, Omega Defender has great stats. Compare it to Stagadon, which is a 4-mana 2-6 vanilla beast. This is a 4-mana 2-6 with potential massive, massive upside if played on turn 10. It just laughs in the face of Stegadon. Yeah, it does. Poor Stegadon. I guess mechs are more correctly than dinosaurs now. As Twink's smoke plan is going to begin. Oh, it is just a stagger on, okay. Yeah, just curving out here, I guess, actually. Uh, you know, there was merit to some other place, Stonehill Defender, uh, you know, whatever. But I think if they hadn't been met with Malfurion, actually, they probably still would have gone for it because they just want to lock down uh, the board, don't they? Because the one way you kind of lose this matchup, or the major way you lose this matchup, I should say, sorry, for Hungary, uh, is you lose board control. If you're taking damage from Arcane Tyrants, the Lich King, that hero power from Malfurion every single turn, that's when your armor gets chipped away and you don't have enough to sustain against a Malagos combo. Right. So the more taunts, the better. It just makes sense. And Twink now, his hand... He's got the Lich King, which is sort of the obvious, it's turn A, I'm going to drop this mm. card. I'm not seeing too many reasons oh, not to play that, actually. Uh, so, I mean, the main thing he's thinking is, is there any way I can fit in a hero power to face this turn? Because you want to do that every turn, pretty much, from here on in. Naturalize, naturalize, hero power, face. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually, with actually branching kind path. of a consideration, I think. Sure. With branching it's paths not. as well, it's not the most ridiculous play I've ever heard. With branching paths to buff the attack of each minion twice, that's quite a bit of damage that gets squeezed in. Yep. And also, Exego mills some cards. I think it gets your opponent to uh, their important cards a little bit early, like obviously the Ooze to deal with your Twig as the main one. And again, this probably ends up getting you more damage through to face uh, with the Lich King, because they have to have an answer to it, which is not necessarily available. With the double naturalize, yeah, Hungry would draw two cards, but they'd mill three. So they actually have a higher chance of milling with the double naturalize play. Would they? Oh, yeah. So, I don't know, may have been something to consider because of that. What now? I suppose the plan here for Twink, though, is, uh, first of all, put your opponent on having an answer which they don't necessarily have yep. in hand, um, because it's pretty limited answers. It's, what, um, one BGH as well as two uh, Shield Slams, obviously. Uh, in the deck for Hungary. Oh, Freckless Flurry. Yeah, well, if they do that, you are absolutely over the moon. <laughs> I guess the worst thing that can happen is they go Faceless Manipulator into uh, Shield Slam. But again, you're not yeah. playing around like 
exact worst scenario combos because you do need to take risks in this matchup. You are pretty behind from the outset. However, Hungry don't actually have anything, so they're going to have to play the Brawler here. If the Lich King wins this, that's a complete disaster for Exego. Okay, heart and mouth for a second there. Looks like we're good. Yeah, that was a little bit of a scary one. Uh, but even this Scarab is not bad. You get to push the hero power to face here. Whatever, just throw down um, a Giggling Inventor is okay, I suppose. Yep. One Brawl has literally just been used. Yeah, you do want to start playing cards from your hand so that you can actually draw once again. Because again, if you do find an ultimate infestation, you do want to be allowed to play it. My thoughts are um, but you do really want to fit that hero power in. So I guess Gilly Inventor hero power face is kind of the best you got. We're obviously not going to be met by a, a mossy horror in this odd warrior. It's definitely a good play, right? Like just giggling yeah. into hero power face. There are very limited ways of removing it. And as you said, there's no mossy horror here. It's pretty much just the second brawl. Maybe a mind control tech would take one of the minions mm. away, but that's not a complete disaster for Denmark. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, I know it's really Death dumb, but like, eternal. I'm almost looking at Doom Pact on this turn just to get it out of your hand, because then you can play Arcane Tyrant as well, start freeing up some hand space. Um, I obviously don't think you do it because, you know, you clear off one of your own minions and you mill a card. You mill Malagos. Make, you, exactly. That happens you, you could mill Malagos, Flute, or Alexstrasza, or Swipe, or Moonfire, there's, or Twig. There's too many bad cards to, mull, uh, to mill at this point. Um, but later on, at least, if there's a scenario where a board is completely cleared, then I think you very happily go Doom Pact into Arcane Tyrant just to get cards out of your hand. Engaging TC-130, mental dislocator. All right. Yeah, you're not too sad with that. You prefer a Divine Shield, probably. I think Denmark's fine, too. So Exego has the, the choice. He can either play a big taunt or play little taunt plus tank up. And I think the uh, the option that allows you to play the tank up is probably the stronger one. I would generally agree with you. Uh, you just can't have enough armor in this matchup because uh, with no twig available to Exego either, uh, if Denmark do find the full combo of Malagos, Break the Twig, Floop, Swipe, Moonfire, Moonfire, maybe even with a Death Coil for all Hungary, you know, off the Lich King card, that is just insane amounts of damage. So, Twing's got to be looking at that branching paths every single turn that he has minions, but unfortunately, because of those taunts that have quite a bit of health, it, it doesn't really do anything to the face here. So. Ah, well, you can clear off everything with your minions, actually, with pretty decent trades, then get that hero power to face. I think he's going to go for it, because when do you have more minions than this on board against Old Warrior? They're yeah. just going to clear every turn. Well, that's the thing, you just don't have more minions yeah. than this ever. I like this a lot. Uh, like I said, like... Oh, it's going to be the double naturalized this turn. <laughs> Come on, let's go! This is some real damage through to face, wow. And again, Exego will be drawing two cards and milling three, exactly the same as the previous turn, assuming the second naturalizer played as well. Shield block and shield slam are pretty good cards in this matchup as armor gain and a way to deal with Malagos if it does come down. Uh, but here for Twink, he could get some pretty big burns here. Twig in particular, oh, sorry, the ooze in particular would be a big burn. At least is not bad though. That is not bad. That can be a pretty big swing turn here for Hungry if they do manage to find that pack. Well, the fact remains, Hungry don't have a, a clear way of removing this. Dynamatic! Oh, it doesn't really do anything against yeah, the, the Mechies, anyway. Yeah, the Mechies. Uh, no, it, it's just Brawl. Brawl is the only card Exego has to remove this board, and it's, it's not really good enough. <laughs> So what can you go for outside of that? You could go as uh, Zilliax. Oh, well, you're at full health, so you don't get the life steal. Yeah, just going to be taunting up, trying to protect his face, because now you have seen double naturalize. You are much more comfortable, I think, to rely on your taunts to protect your face. That four mana one seven is looking really good here, actually. Well, as good as the Mogushan Warden can look. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. That, that is how, how good it's looking. It's pretty good against Divine Shields. Um, Denmark can clear up this entire board just with with uh, his minions and the hero power. So, 
unfortunately, though, like the naturalizers would be better against these minions. Yeah, they really would. But again, he got in the damage last turn and could have had the chance to mill some very important cards. Um, I, I wonder if Twink will put his opponent on not having Brawl. Like, if he had the Brawl, you probably wouldn't use it there, right? Uh, as we can see, Hungry chose not to. So therefore, it looks like he's not going for Plague Double Tyrant, uh, which if you did sense weakness from your opponent, if you thought they didn't have that removal, just snap playing that could be a really strong play onto the board and start doing some major damage. That Spellstone's looking pretty good now. Clean oh, yeah. way of getting rid of the Dire Horn. And now two trades into the Mogushin Warden, and then six damage goes straight into the face now. Twink, chunk by chunk, is chipping away at that armor. Yeah, obviously kind of unfortunate that he couldn't go for the attack because he had to power up the all spell stone, as it were. Mm. Oh, sorry, only three go into the face. Yeah, yeah but, it, it, you know, it's it's very respectable. Does kind of mean that Hungary is in this... I mean, I say this, this is not a good way of putting it, but sweet spot where they're allowed to go for Reckless Flurry for the next few turns, I suppose. Uh, they yeah. still don't want to because losing eight armor can be bad. But if Denmark does go for some kind of a big play onto the board with double Tyrant, there is that extra clear for Exego where he could just go Reckless Flurry, then she, uh, tank up afterwards. Looking at the versatility of the floop again, because the, if Twink wanted to, he could play Triple Tyrant oh, in one turn. However, yeah. in this matchup, we're getting an extra Malagos is so important. It's mm. not something Twink's going to be seriously considering. In a world where both brawls had been used, though, maybe that's something to think about. Yeah, you definitely need to play creatively in this matchup because, again, from the offset, your combo probably won't work unless you lock down board, uh, which a zero mana 3 4 in the form of Flabindless Fluke would do a pretty good job of. You can push forward a good amount of damage, especially if you find the second branching path as well. Uh, but if your tweak is destroyed, the maximum amount of damage you can do in a single turn would just be Malagos Double Moonfire and pray that it sticks. Still no ultimate infestation or nourish in sight, so this is about as all-in as Twink could possibly go. And just a lot of the good cards have not been found yet. Like you said, UI, Twig, Alexstrasza, Malagos. You're going to need something a little bit more impressive than this to be pulling it back. On the other side of things though, Super Collider is actually not looking too bad at all here. One hit could deal with both Arcane Tyrants. Mm. After a shield slam deals with the Anoyatron, maybe that's not the way to go. I don't know. Having that Super Collider there set up on the board as well is never a bad thing. Yeah, maybe you just go for it. You can go Zilliac Super Collider, clear off everything. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. You do miss the tank up. And if you are missing the tank up, maybe you just go Reckless Flurry and then Hero Power up afterwards. He oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Also worth considering, right? Alternatively, there is Tank Up, Shield Slam on the Anoyatron, trade with the 1-5 and yeah. Super Collider and two four fours. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I was oversimplifying that it there. I was going to say, if you go for Reckless Flurry Hero Power, you still end up on the, the four armor total. Whereas with this way, yes, you end up on four armor still, but you have this board in play, yeah. which is not nothing. This is, this is actually quite a long way from nothing, don't I say. Because even if you do force them to use a swipe, Brilliant. It's a, a swipe that's not going to your well, yeah. face. Darius is getting out of control here. It's now an 8-4. And that's the thing about this card. Again, it's not absurdly overpowered, you know? It's not vicious fledgling strong. Yeah. But it's always good. It's never bad. I always feel like Darius Crowley has somewhat of a silly, a silly pose for how serious of a character he seems to be. Like He's just got his sword up like, yay. And there's other arm in the air as well. Yeah. He's got his arms in the air, as if he doesn't even care. I don't think he does care, Derek. Poor Gilmayans. My thoughts are plagued. <sighs> so, I guess Twink has to consider that Doom Pact again. Oh, you have so many good cards in deck. Like, if you're know, burning I... two cards, it's, uh, yeah, what, just like a one in six to lose Malagos I or to lose Alex Straza. The odds become pretty grim pretty quickly. Yeah. Ultimate infestation would also be awful to mill. But so the alternative you, is this. Maybe That's you just right. have to start taking risks. I don't know. Zero mana Arkham Tyrant is available for Twink again if he wanted to take it. But there you go. The swipe gets used up.
which means that the total damage that Twink and Team Denmark can deal to Exico is just getting lower and lower. Meanwhile, two Shield Slams now present in Hungary's hand. That's a lot of removal. It is. Yeah, you kind of want to save it though, right? Like Alex Straza and Malagos, the two big dragon boys, you really do want to be saving it for them. So instead, kind of sensing weakness from his opponent here. Hungary, I think, will have realized there's no weakness. Oh, sorry, there's no card draw really left available for, Trink, uh, for Twink, or it would have come down. He's not even bothering to take up anymore. Yeah, exactly. He's just playing a 9-mana 7-8 instead. I mean, the amount of damage that Twink can deal now is not that big. Like I was saying, with the Twig, you can do insane amounts of damage. But now you've got the Ooze, you can just tank up enough. Your opponent's only going to be doing, uh, what, Floop, Swipe, Double Moonfire in a single turn. Uh, which is uh, 11, uh, 6, uh, sorry, 12, 9, 21. It's yeah. not that much damage. And the thing is, there's no way Denmark ever gets Malagos to stick anyway. Again, two shield slams sitting in Hungary's yep. hand. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> stone. The spellstone just not what Twink wanted to draw here. So, ha what? Has he drawn a single narrow shirt? I don't think he has. Yeah, yeah, he has. Oh, he, he ramped up into Malfurion. Yeah. Right, right, right. Which kind of goes back and illustrates the problem with ramping up when you have no card draw in hand. It's something that, it, sometimes, you know, often it's right, but like, it is a struggle with Druin because you have to choose. Yeah. If you don't have an ultimate infestation or branching paths, etc., it's often wrong to ramp up with Nourish. As the Doom Pack does come down, whew, Giggling Inventor being burned is most definitely a bullet dodged there for Denmark. Um, but yeah, back to what you were saying about the, um, the Nourish there with what was, I believe, a, a Ferocious Howl and a Branching Path yeah. in hand, yeah. you kind of have to do it. And even without that, you're curving into Malfurion. That gives you stuff to do with your mana every single turn, pretty much. And what, both UIs and another Ferocious Howl and a Nourish and a Branching Path all in the bottom nine cards. This is starting to be a little bit unfortunate for the old Denmark team here. But it is also worth mentioning, they have chipped away at the armor total from Hungary. They're, they've actually damaged them, which is a pretty big feat against Odd Warrior a lot of the time. As finally, ultimate infestation has been drawn. And I have to imagine, goes to just goes face. Oh, you think? Wow. It's, it's five damage to phase. I You're guess nothing is really going to be damaging the security rover and creating some taunts. Yeah, like if you push, the, if you do it to the 2-5, f uh, the they spawn a 2-3. You have to hero power that to even allow your 5-5 five yeah. five to connect face. Ooh, looks like they hit the minion, though. Yeah, I, I mean, it can do disgusting things, I guess, if you allow them to damage it themselves or whatever, but... I don't know how many tools that Hungary even have to damage it themselves, though, as Alex Straza and finally Malagos do get drawn, but <laughs> Exegos still has 33 health, and one swipe and one moonfire is not going to be enough to finish this game. I guess with Alex Straza, they can put Exego down to 19, but still. I mean, that's the play, right? They have to go for it now, or the tank up just gets them way out of range of ever dying. And now again, that, yeah, that I don't want to bring it up because I I trust that Denmark are all very, very strong players indeed. But that five damage to face, what, the Steel Rager probably still would have connected, which obviously they don't know is in their opponent's hand. That is me letting Cast Division get to me somewhat there. Um, but I don't know, five extra damage could be a, a very big difference, especially as it was mostly to armor. Only one damage would have been done to the actual health total, uh, which obviously goes away after Twink plays Alex Strasser. So yeah, Exico would be on 32. Um, it still would have been tricky to deal enough damage. I mean, no Twig, thoughts, Twig plus the hero great. power every turn is four damage, I guess, per turn. It's a little bit late to be playing Twig now. Like, you don't expect the effect to ever go off here. As Austria and Japan are playing off stream, Japan just took their first win. Um, this is actually an elimination game. Ooh. The losing team between yeah, Austria and Japan will also be eliminated. So many elimination matches over HGG's uh, week four. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have anticipated Japan being um, down in the elimination matchup, but we've seen a pretty strong year from them so far. Yeah. Um, I've liked a lot of their plays, both at uh, the Summer Champs and uh, Tokyo as well, obviously. 
But now, after long deliberation, Denmark realised if we're not getting it done quickly, we're not getting it done at all, really. Yep. Would have been great if they realised that 10 turns ago. <laughs> but unfortunately, they didn't oh, have the cards. What, what could they have done? <laughs> but finally, yeah, Hungary are going to just tank up, play the Shield Slam. They've got the second Shield Slam to hit Malagos the next turn. They've also got a big board that they can start to beat Twink down with. This game is looking all but over cards. now for Denmark. I mean, you can go... Malagos, Spellstone, the 6 9, uh, which, I mean, hey, it's not hitting anything else. Yeah, no. Um, and then next turn, you push 21 damage again, I think. Or if you can connect face with the Hero Power 24 um, after no, swipe for 9 faked. and double moon 5 for 12. Yeah, 21, 24, just double checking the old maths. I mean, maybe Denmark here need to equip the twig just for five damage like it's not much but potentially their opponent doesn't have the immediate answer uh, but even having said that it's just so unlikely to ever work well twink gonna put the moonfire's face now um why is that derek like is there a reason to not hold on to these and wait until because potentially the malagos survives and the next turn you can play a second malagos and deal even more damage with these moonfires why play them now that is true. It, it could stick, I suppose. I guess it's more likely to stick if you do Moonfire to prevent the shield slam. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's the point, then. Good but, spot there, Mr. Falcone. Oh, okay. And he can play the second Malagos with the swipe next turn. Sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. However, this Malagos is not going to survive. And if it is surviving, it's going to at least get silenced. Yeah, I mean, with shield block drawn off the top as well, it's the perfect answer. It was, I suppose, looking a little bit shaky there, as they would have had to have gone in on the Iron Beak Owl, I believe. Uh, but now, very easy. You tank up, your shield slam, and you're still looking very good. You're miles ahead in terms of fatigue, or I suppose Denmark has drawn way more cards, I should say, to make it obvious. Back to 29 health again. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Good luck to Denmark dealing with this. The other swipe obviously has been used, so you just have to pray that this Malagos sticks somehow. Um, but even after just hero power reckless flurry if you absolutely have to like if you don't want to go for out you kind of got to consider stuff like that or even faceless manipulator to up your spell damage and then reckless flurry and then hero power it gets you two more armor <laughs> or uh four more armor actually sorry afterwards because otherwise you're what leaving a 412 on the board yeah i mean I think you do it, right? I mean, yeah, faceless, reckless, hero power looks fine. <laughs> as as stupid as it seems. I will admit, it's a very dumb play. Oh, yeah. But it's also the best play, as the dumb plays so often are. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we find out that Reckless Flurry doesn't actually get spell damage buff or something. Nope, there it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would have been a little bit embarrassing for Exco if it didn't work that way. But again, Hearthstone has rules. So it did. <laughs> but finally, Denmark throwing it down here. I think they've realized this is just never, ever going to get there unless there's absolutely no answer for this um, duel. But even then, you're just dying to fatigue. They can hear a power up every single turn. How much fatigue damage is that they're taking here? Oh, now six next turn. Not a quite dead yet, but... Wow. Because I guess your kind of best play on this turn is... Oof, reckless Flurry. I mean, well, what? If you go uh, Hero Power, Reckless Flurry, attack in, yes, you're down to nine health. They can Hero Power your face, but you just get out of range. Even if yeah. they equip Twig, they are never, ever, ever dealing more than four damage a turn with this, which you simply outlast, so you win the game. And someone on Team Denmark will have been, or, or rather Team Hungary will have been tracking what the remaining cards are. Someone on that team will have kept up. They'll know, well, for certain that one of those cards is Twig, because they're still holding onto the ooze themselves. Yeah. But the fact that only one Nourish was played, the fact that only one Branch of Paths was played, I'm sure that's something that they'll remember. As the board's been cleared with the exact play that you suggested. And that looks like game to me. And it was pretty important, actually, for Twink and Team Denmark to be taking this one, because, again, an unfavorable but not unwinnable matchup there for the Danes. And now, while they have a decent matchup coming up next, 
And I suppose a mirror afterwards. It, it could still go it either way. It could still honestly. happen. Honestly, like, ever since <sighs> Denmark won the odd paladin yeah. versus the, e the even warlock, uh, this series has been blown wide open. And assuming that Denmark win the next matchup, which should be favorable as we take a look at what the next matchup is, it's going to be Hoy on the even warlock versus Steve French on the odd paladin. Uh, now again, we did see Denmark win this matchup the other way around earlier. However, we still believe that it should be favored for the warlock. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you there, especially when you've got Hoy on that even warlock. And while, uh, you know, throughout Hearthstone history, Hoy has been known for some very different decks to even Warlock. I'm referring most to his Murloc Paladin play where he was playing, what, Deathwing in it, I think, as the dragon with the curator package uh, with a very cool signature Hoy twist, um, which I think we were actually uh, had the privilege of casting at the Gold Club World Championship as well. Well, that was kind of his deck that he was yeah. assigned by the team because he was just so blooming good at it. Um, but he has been playing a lot of even war Warlock is the point I'm trying to make. He's been posting on Ladder saying he still just thinks this is pretty much the most powerful deck. He's been having great success with it on Ladder. And so with him behind the wheel uh, with this even Warlock against a favorable matchup in the Odd Paladin, I would have to imagine it's going to be very few to, if any, slip-ups. Not a single new card in the even Warlock whatsoever. It is exactly the deck that the Hoi will have been playing before the expansion came out. No Demonic Project, no Spirit Bombs, nothing like that. There are a few more new cards for the Paladin. They're running Glowtron, also running Mecharu, though. Um, I've highlighted Blood Knight as a new card in my notes. It's obviously not a new card, but it's sort of new in competitive Hearthstone because nobody would have ever thought about playing it before. But they're running two copies of Giggling Inventor and two copies of Blood Knight. We saw the Blood Knight do some serious work for the Odd Paladin earlier in those last vital turns where they played a Blood Knight to get rid of their own Annoyatron's Divine Shield, make it a 6-6, six, six, make a 3-3, three, three, and and it ended up being enough of a board to win the game. So, hey, turns out Blood Knight's pretty good even to sap your own Divine Shields. Yeah, it's good to get your own Divine Shields, but that's not why it's in the deck. It's right. because your opponent is playing so many Giggling Inventors is obviously the main point. But against an even Warlock, where obviously Giggling Inventor is unplayable, unless you want to make your again, do literally nothing and you just fancy playing a 6-mana six 6-5 six in your deck, it's going to be significantly less powerful. Yep. Uh, but even by that metric, even Warlock does struggle with dealing with single big minions, uh, unless they can hit it with a Spellstone or just have a big board already with Giants and Drakes. Most of them are not running uh, Siphon Soul. You kind of have to rely on Silence, I guess, as your best option to a really big, um, a really big Blood Knight. But they can get really, really big and demand an answer very quickly. I, I, something I, I want to look at about Hungary's uh, Odd Paladin, actually, that's a little bit different, is that they are running two copies of Mecharu. Okay. Now, when Mecharu was announced, I thought that it would be appearing a lot because Zoo obviously ran Possessed Villager, and it's a very, very similar card. Mm. However, in Paladin, with Blessing of Mites, Mecharu just isn't quite as good as Argent Squire. So it's curious to me that they've cut Argent Squire for two copies of Mecharu. Um, it is to me as well. They are probably coming to the same conclusion I did just now when they're saying they don't really want to Blood Knight their own minions. Uh, but I'm not even sure that's necessarily correct. I think losing Divine Shield on a 1-1 one -one for a plus 2, plus 2 buff um, is probably worth it, actually. Or is it... Oh, sorry, plus 3, plus 3 even. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's definitely that's worth right. it, then. <laughs> oh, as uh, Hungary, when they were on the uh, even Warlock earlier on, was getting... Uh, no Hellfires. They had a couple of Defiles early on. But here for Denmark, this is Board Clear Central. Yep, that's certainly an opening hand that you're happy to see against uh, a deck like Art Paladin. Hmm. The only issue is sort of using them all too early and then letting the Odd Paladin overwhelm the board after they're gone. But I guess before he has two Hellfires and a Defile, he can probably... Um, space those out quite nicely. That is a good point you bring up, is that Odd Paladin is not a deck that you can just clear, 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 clear forever because they have so much value just by pressing that hero power every single turn. Eventually, they'll hit level up or they'll hit Divine Shield Maul or they'll hit Fungal Mancer or Raid Leader or whatever, and they will just burst you out of the game with their wide board. So you do have to develop your own threats whilst also clearing the board when necessary. Uh, which we did see from the Hungarians in the uh, earlier on in the series when they went coin Drake into Drake to try and put forward their own threat, lock down the board through minion trading rather than purely relying on uh, just the AOE board clears to do it, which I think is the right line of thinking. Uh, but for Denmark, 
even with this, they're starting to get the semblance of locking down board control just with the cards in hand. Uh, Mossy Horror as a 2-7 is pretty good. Mountain Giant, if it finds a spot to be played because they're not under too much aggression, could also be very good. Humunculus, just another good draw against the Odd Paladin. It's something that Hungary failed to draw earlier, the Humunculus, but um, it's there in Hoy's hand. I don't believe we've mentioned yet that Hungary are actually one of the production team's picks for the tournament. So they're not going to be very happy at all if Hungary drop out here. I hope they still bring us our food, though. I hope so as well. It's not our fault, production team. <laughs> But like you said, the Volga Homunculus is a very nice way to just start contesting the board early on. Trying to, uh, you know, just like I said, use your minions to fight back for board instead of just the Defile. Yeah, it's just another way of holding back the holding back the Defile and just as a two-four body with Taunt, it does such a good job of contesting the board mm. early. Shame there's no Spellstone in the hand to buff up to make things perfect. I mean, with the double Hellfire, that's something that. Hoy would be liking to see as well, but I think Denmark are feeling perfectly happy at the moment, and it's really down to Hungary to work out how they can take some sort of advantage here. Yes, they have the Corridor Creeper. That could be great later on. They've got as many 1-1s as they could possibly want, and next turn, they can coin level up. That's great. It's time for the first to file. Yeah, they're basically saying to your opponent, you've got to remove this right now, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, because for Hoy here, it's not as simple as saying, okay, let them level up, whatever, we'll Hellfire afterwards. You will have taken, what, uh, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage in the meanwhile, <laughs> You're and eat. then you're Hellfiring yourself, which brings you down to 5. Yeah. And then looking at Hungary's list, would you just be dead to Leroy Jenkins at that point? Um, it's not in the deck. Again, it has made running. the cut, but a little bit too low, I think we can all agree. And so just Hellfiring a bunch of 1-1s is worth considering here is uh, unassuming as they may look, because it's not only coin level up, which they would absolutely keep in this matchup, it's also coin fungal mancer. It's even just raid leader. There's so many cards that punish this slow play. Um, astonishingly though, despite having three board clears in hand, Hoy's just said, nope, I'm gonna put an eight on the board. Because Your again, turn. what happens if you go hellfire here, they go, okay, I won't go coin level up. I'll play my other cards. I'll go double one drop hero power or uh, even just coin into another five drop like Giggling Inventor. Or maybe they play Corridor Creeper on that turn, which they've also probably kept. So maybe this turn Hungary does go all in with the level up and then just gets hell fired, putting Denmark down to five with Vine Cleaver in hand. Yeah, it's it's not bad. It's close, but maybe not close enough. But in this instance, now that Hoy has a minion on the board, he will be very happy to go for AoE removal. So if Steve French, basically whatever he goes for here, the board will be cleared in pretty much every scenario. So I think he's thinking, using this level up as, uh, what, six extra damage on this play yeah. has to be worth it. So with the Hellfire, Denmark can then push 11 damage themselves actually setting up lethal over the next few turns. Obviously, Giggling Inventor could do some work to prevent that, but then there's Mossy Horror, oh, which yes. deal with the Giggling Inventor. So actually, Denmark could be winning this game faster <laughs> than you'd think, even though they currently, uh, well, they're going to end this turn potentially with only seven health. And I'm sure they will have had this in mind. Uh, Hoy is probably imagining that this giant gets used as a trading stick for this game, uh, given the way that Steve French would usually be curving out with Odd Paladin. Uh, but like you said, if Mossy Horror can meet a Giggling Inventor on curve, I think you're very happy to just keep smacking them for A every single turn. Mm -hmm. So yeah, 11 damage this turn with the Hellfire and the Giant. Let's hungry down to 17. Then next turn, Giggling Inventor gets played. Mossy Horror deals with that. That's 9 health. Yeah, it's getting pretty close for both teams, actually. I also like from uh, Hoy and Team Denmark here, after their uh, communication breakdown, I would imagine, with the Odd Paladin game, taking it nice and slow, even with an easy turn like this where you're pretty much always going to play Hellfire, mm -hmm. uh, you want to discuss what are we doing next turn? If they play Giggling Inventor, what do we do? If they go uh, three drop Hero Power, what do we do? How are we responding to this on the next turn so that they can prepare what their uh, response will be in the, uh, the majority of outcomes? The problem for Hungary here is that 
while they will think about Giggling Inventor, what other options do they have? Everything gets destroyed right. by Mossy Horror. Literally, Literally everything. Anything they could think about playing, even their hero power, just gets obliterated by that horrible monster. So, it's pretty much Giggling Inventor or nothing. Unless they want to bait out the Mossy Horror by playing Fireflies and Righteous Protectors and Coral Creepers and then play Giggling Inventor to survive the following turn. Yep. So that's and what they're going for. The Corridor Creeper is also somewhat less vulnerable to uh, Defile because it has a nice high health total, whereas Giggling Inventor would have been a little bit more vulnerable to the Defile, I suppose. But even then, it's got, what, a one health and two three health minions, so you wouldn't have actually been able to get through without attacking in with the Mountain Giant yeah. first, which yeah. would then clear off your own Mountain Giant. But um, it does look to me like it should be a pretty easy Mossy Horror turn here. Well, I don't know. Hellfire does the <laughs> job just fine. It does the job decently, but this develops a 2-7, keeps a giant healthy, and blows up the entire board. I, I like the consideration because, again, maybe they're going I'm to I'm using Cast of Vision turn. again and thinking, yeah, but you need the Mossy Horror to do with the Giggling Inventor. But obviously, this play looked much better right now. And even with the Giggling now, yes, there are a bunch of taunts on the board, but Denmark does have some tools to start getting through those. They have a Silence, which can deal with one. I mean, they have the Defile. Yeah, that's just game, actually. Which, yeah. Trade the Files Mossy Horror in, and then the giant still gets to... No, you, it's just... Oh, uh, because of the Righteous yeah, Protector, The Righteous yeah. Protector played into exactly. <laughs> oh. Which... Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe should have been a consideration, actually, there from Steve French. Yeah. It wasn't kept in the starting hand, I don't believe. It was just gained off with a mulligan. But even then, you know, Defile just playing into exact lethal from your opponent, where maybe you could have tried to wrestle that one back afterwards, as unlikely as it would be, was worth considering. But yeah. I guess if they defile that board, you're probably not winning anyway. I guess. It's definitely something to think about, though, because, yeah, the Righteous Protector has two health. The thing is with Giggling, as you, you said earlier, like, okay, there's a 2-1, two, 2 minions that have three health. So at that point, the Giant has to trade into one of the Divine Shields to set up the Defile, which would then deal with the Giant. But because of the Righteous Protector, it was just a very easy clear. There you go. We have two games potentially left. Oh, sorry, one game potentially Ooh, left. No we're actually, we're all the way at game number five. Let's take a look. It's going to be... There we go. It's going to be Priest versus Priest. And I believe both of them are pretty standard control priests. Yep, they are. They are literally Mind Blast Priests that you would get from before the expansion. Um, Denmark's runs a single copy of Giggling Inventor, but otherwise they are as standard as these priests come. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what you said uh, for Team Denmark, right? When you were talking to Crane in DMs, he was kind of just saying, yeah, we mostly just uh, took de decks off the internet that we thought looked pretty good. We didn't have time to test them all too much ourselves, uh, which, you know, we kind of giggle at, but it's a perfectly <laughs> valid thing to do. Nice. Um, uh, you know, when you don't have the time to dedicate enough of your resources to every individual matchup, you have to delegate. You have to say, okay, this pro player has played this matchup an awful lot more than I have. What do they have to say about it? Even with, like Orange was saying in the interview beforehand, he said, I don't really fully understand Azalina quite yeah. yet, but Hunter Ace says it's good, and Hunter Ace is good, and that sounds pretty good. It's really hard. I mean, I was talking to Frodan on Talkstone about preparing for Hearthstone Global Games mm. matches, and you have to prepare nine unique classes. Like, just, just think about that for a second. Those of you watching, if you've ever entered any sort of best out of five conquest tournament, even preparing a lineup for that is difficult. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of struggling it, uh, at it as a caster. I can't actually count past the number four. Mm. Um, but it, it sounds really big, like at least more than 70. Oh, no, wait. That's the bigger one. Never mind. I'll get back to it. Okay, well, this is going to be a hard cast, then, with Mind Blast Priests <laughs> trying to count to 30 damage. Let's take a look. It's the final game. Denmark versus Hungary. Loser goes home, figuratively. Let's go. It's all right. I learned what the little squiggles mean. I wrote them down, like <laughs> the 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 line, and then the one that looks a bit like an S equals dead because they've just played Alex Straza. So yeah. it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, that adds up. <laughs> but here for both of these players, 
uh, in this matchup, while the early skirmishes and the card draw can obviously be very important, generally you want to have your sights set on a little bit more of a late game plan, I find. You want to be hitting your um, your Shadow Reaper Anduin as quick as you can because that just ramps up your late game so aggressively in this matchup. If you can get that first, start Alex Straza your opponent, that can just be the lockout victory you need because when every single one of your cards refreshes that hero power, you're looking to be in a great spot just in terms of value. Thanks to go just throwing away everything, looking for those bigger, more important cards. Okay, both players have ended up with the Twilight Drake. That's that's an okay way to start. Yeah, because that that's kind of the the counteracting point, isn't it, to um, looking for the uh, the Shadow Reaper Anduin. It's not like the kind of old Freeze Mage mirrors where board control was just not a thing at all. Mm -hmm. You just uh, you just wanted your late game win condition. In this matchup, like you said, you've got Twilight Drakes, Dust Breakers to an extent, and the uh, Primordial Drakes. So you can actually put forward a pretty formidable board in the mid game uh, before Psychic Scream it being the main point there. You need to do it before turn seven. Austria Japan now one on one, playing their own elimination match off stream. Things are getting really intense here in the Hearthstone Global Game Studio. Maybe on your side of the desk. It's nice and chill over here. The <laughs> chill zone with Derek Brown. We'll, uh, we'll have to let Lorinda and Gaskin know that that's, that's how it's split. Oh, they noticed the out of my space, don't you worry. Oh. This chill zone is a bubble into which none are allowed. <laughs> which makes it sound a lot less chill than it actually is. <laughs> These players, though, not having much choice but to chill at the moment with nothing to do whatsoever. Yep. Mexico could dump a <laughs> wild pyromancer, but what does that achieve? Yeah, you kind of want to be saving that for your draw, don't you? Uh, they obviously didn't play Shadow Visions last turn, which again mm. is a talking point I've made so much in Control Priest games where you want to save that until you actually know what to look for. Maybe you need Divine Him if your opponent goes on the aggressive, or maybe you need Mind Blast if they don't go on the aggressive and you're moving towards your own win condition first. You just don't have the necessary information yet, so wait. You're going to have plenty of mana spare over the next few turns because again, while board control can matter, this is not really a board matchup. I meant board as in like board control, not as in your board of this game. <laughs> but that's debatable, I guess. It's uh, it's one of those matchups that has quite a slow start <laughs> and really heats up later on. Like once we, once the shadowy Branduins come down, yeah, yeah, then the game will motor to the finish. In the meantime, though, Denmark have to decide whether they want to coin out this Twilight Drake right now. Coin is valuable in this matchup, but having an early 4-7 could also be quite valuable. They go with the Acolyte. Yeah, you're playing into your opponent's Dustbreaker a little bit, but then you're thinking, what if my opponent goes Dustbreaker, they're not playing Twilight Drake, mm -hmm. which is pretty good, actually, uh, because then you can just respond with your own Twilight Drake, and you're taking some very nice value trades, healing up with the Northshire Cleric. So I think even in kind of the, uh, air quotes, worst case scenario of Dustbreaker to mm. kill this off, sure. you're still in a pretty good spot because you are then ahead on board with the Twilight Drake. But if they coined out the Twilight Drake that turn, they were still ahead on board with the Twilight Drake, right? But their opponent then plays Drake on curve. They're not forced into going for this play okay. of Dustbreaker is kind of the point I'm making. It's I, I agree. It was obviously not the strongest immediate play, uh, but it forces your opponent to play Dustbreaker and you get to save the coin. Uh, can which can be very good in this matchup. And you can then, as you said, you can trade into the Dustbreaker, play the Cleric and heal. Okay, sure. Oh, yes. I think this worked out quite well. I'm sold. And you get a 4-9 instead of a 4-7, which is a pretty big difference. I think we can both agree. As now, uh, any silence available to Hungary, while obviously not in hand, could be looketh for with the... Shadow Visions. Uh, one copy of Master Spell, so not even playable <laughs> Same on, on this turn. Same in both lists. Yeah. One copy of Master Spell again. It was relatively standard towards the end of the Witchwood meta. But, but yeah, that Twilight Drake is, is certainly causing Exego some issues here. As Yeah, he could just drop his own, but as you said, he's very behind then. Though, because of the Power Word Shield, there's no easy value trade to be made anymore. Yeah. And I think the main thing was wondering uh, for Exego, like, what's my play in the next few turns? Uh, if I go for Psychic Scream, do I want to go Drake here? That's a draw. As Dispel, value trade into the Twilight Drake. 
maybe even coin a heal? Oh. Yeah, and then what? Do you go... Yeah, coin heal is not that good because you're not drawing a card. Yeah. Um, but again, because of that powered shield, you can't really keep your North Shire Cleric in a good position. Oh, the Master Spell has to be tempting here, though. Like, just You still draw a card, I guess, don't you? Yeah, the amount of damage it does to the Twilight Drake. It's just a question of whether he wants to heal up his own Twilight Drake to, to try and keep that as healthy as possible. Maybe it's just not necessary. Oh, I think with the Wild Pyro, you definitely keep it now, right? Yeah, 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 that's true. Because then even if somehow they deal with your Drake with their own play, uh, I'm not entirely sure what that could be that wouldn't kill off their own Drake. Uh, you can kill off with a wild pyromancer, and even if not, you can just go pyromancer cleric coin div uh, divine him or something on a following turn. It's much too valuable to give up now. As while we were talking about the uh, the late game plan of finding Shadow Reaper Anduin, neither player has got that quite yet, and therefore Hoy and Team Denmark have got themselves into a really nice spot because they are decidedly ahead on board control for the moment. They have a minion with high health stuck on the board, so they can start drawing up with a uh, North Shire Cleric, at least from where they're sat, because we can clearly see Duskbreaker is likely to come down on this turn just to clean up this whole mess. Board control is really important in the early stages of this matchup. Like, uh, we talk about chip damage a lot, but in this matchup specifically, where the breakpoints can vary so dramatically with different quantities of mass dispel, different amounts of, of cards that can be played with Shadow Reaper and and hero powers, dealing as much damage as possible early on can make all the difference. Even just to bait out early healing so that you can then Alex them back down again and then win the game. So I'm um, thinking of a reason why you wouldn't go for one of the dragons on this turn. And even considering Dustbreaker, I think you just go Twilight Drake, right? Um, because then, again, you're in a much better position. You can trade up. And Dustbreaker can be good uh, later on. If your opponent goes for some kind of an Acolyte Northshire Cleric Pyromancer draw plan, just cleaning up all the gubbins that's left behind after that. All right, Lorinda. <laughs> all the nonsense. I don't know. What's another word for gubbins? Detritus? Yeah, Lorinda wouldn't say that. Yeah. Say the twice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Neil. I'm, I know you're probably running to punch me in the face right now, but I couldn't not. We just both nervously. Yeah, we're both kind of expecting to actually run and punch me in the face. I don't, I don't want to look away. <laughs> okay, there is a game of Hearthstone going on here. We should probably assume that won't happen and get back to it. I don't know, man. He's swift when he needs to be. But here for Exego, looking like it's going to be the draw plan. Uh, he's not far. Uh, well, he's lost board control in the. Year. Uh, immediate game plan. He hasn't found Shadow Reaper Andrew, and things are not looking good for Team Hungary here. And so they're going to have to start drawing through their deck because if they don't find Shadow Reaper Anduin to start closing out the game quickly, given that they have an Alex Straza, they're probably just going to start dying way too quickly. Went with the Master Spell there so that next turn they, they have a, a, at least the option of an easy way of removing this Twilight Drake, although it's not the perfect pick. As Hoy picks up Shadow Reaper Anduin, you were saying before that things are looking bad for Hungary. Well, now things are looking really good for Denmark. Yeah, it's a weird turn outside of that, though, because uh, obviously this hand is looking fantastic for Denmark with two Mind Blasts, Holy Fire, Anduin, and still the coin, even, if they wanted to go for it. Um, it's a strong-looking turn. But, you know, they have no Dragon for the Dustbreaker. This board is a little bit annoying uh, from Team Hungary. Here we go. Denmark just about to draw the rest of their deck with the Cleric, with the coin, with the Divine Hymn that they just snap-picked. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I guess that will actually clear up the board beautifully. <laughs> this, this turn actually couldn't have been much better. It was just the speed at which they took that Divine Hymn because they've been very measured, yeah. very careful with their decisions, as you said. They've been taking their turns very, very slowly, but Hoy knew exactly what he wanted to do this turn. Even drawing two cards instead of three because this gets him up to, what, eight on this turn, so his opponent can't heal to overdraw him. Yep. Uh, because it is still a consideration, you could use lose cards uh, like Alex Straza, like Mind Blood, oh, sorry, like um, uh, Shadow Visions, which could be quite strong as well. 
Japan take their second win against Austria. One more win and then they stay in. One more loss and then Austria are out of the tournament. One turn too early for the Twilight uh, and Kibar Shadow Priest combo. Yeah, just trying to find any play that didn't involve Psychic Scream and letting their opponent just play Shadow Reaper <laughs> Anduin onto the board. Um, but I don't really think there's much alternative here. Uh, the benefit for Hungary if Shadow Reaper Anduin does come down here is they can then just play, play Alex Raza. Yeah. But Denmark down to 15 and then uh, Denmark won't have as easy a way to deal with it. Uh, but then you can just go like Twilight, Acolyte, which isn't bad. And then they have no self silence effects because the only silence effect in the deck is Master Spell. Uh -huh. Like maybe your opponent doesn't have Alex Straza and then you just play Shadow Reaper Anduin, right? And you can start pinging your opponent in the face every turn. It does mm. seem hard to justify not playing Shadow Reaper Anduin. I'll give you that. And again, the only justification would be, what if my opponent has Alex Straza? And they're clearly gearing, they're looking at the Giggling Inventor on this turn because they've just seen a Psychic Stream. Mm -hmm. uh, so they are <laughs> unlikely to shuffle bad cards back into their deck. Uh, but yeah, e even after all that deliberation, it's, just, it's just what you do in this matchup, right? Against something like, I don't know, Big Druid, where they play a whole bunch of high attack minions like Lich King and Tyrantus, then yes, you kind of have to save the Anduin, but against this matchup, where the only minion that has more than uh, five attack, I believe, is Alex Strasser. It is, yeah, I just checked. Uh, you just have free reign to play it. Because you have an answer. Even in the worst case scenario, you got the Twilight Drake. Uh, Twilight Acolyte, sorry. Hungry have also drawn both of their um, Mind Blasts, so there's no potential of more damage with the Shadow Visions. We're looking at 10 total, plus whatever Shadow Reaper Anduin can come up with, if they can draw Shadow Reaper Anduin. But yeah, I, I I don't really see another realistic play other than just dropping Alex Straza here. Uh, but even then, like yeah. playing Alex Straza here, if you go for that and they start healing up, um, obviously the hero power has changed, so the incremental heal is lessened somewhat. But you want to get the distance between Alex Straza and killing them as small as possible, because then less stuff can go wrong. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the hand just isn't doing anything else. And Maybe, if Denmark don't have an answer here, they can just sneak through the most cheeky of victories with double Mind Blast into Holy Fire. It's like, who knows? Maybe it happens. <laughs> they have to be cheeky if they're going to win this game. Yep. Basically the point I'm trying to make. And hey, Exigo do, do, does have oh, a chunk of damage speaks. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To them. It's... it's Certainly achievable, but as you pointed out, the Twilight Acolyte is there, ready to go. I mean, Denmark also has a lot of damage ready to go with the Double Mind Blast and the Holy Fire. I wonder if they ever just Hero Power, Holy Fire, Hero Power, putting Hungry down to 21. Shadow no, because Double Mind thoughts. Blast isn't an lethal next turn, it's only 16 damage. Yeah. That can't be the play. They have to do something about this Alex Straza. Just do it next turn. You want this healing to stick, you yeah. want this Alex Straza to not go face, and you should just win. Uh, because uh, with a dragon picked up now, there is the possibility for Twilight Drake Cabal Shadow Priest, uh, but I'd have to imagine Master Spell looks a little bit more UC on this turn. Yeah, the problem is Master Spell doesn't really clean anything up. It just reduces the attack of Twilight Acolyte and lets Hungry go face for two, which yeah. isn't really that great. You can steal the Twilight Acolyte then with Cabal Shadow Priest. I think I prefer that, or even just taking an Annoyatron seems slightly better to me than... Ah. Well, no, I mean, you go you go Master Spell and then Cabal Shadow Priest. Oh, sure, sure. Um, just oh, to yeah, steal that's... the 2-4. Which, you know, does get you board control. You can then attack face, which, like you said, it's not massively important, but maybe your opponent doesn't have heal, and then you just kill him next turn. It's probably your best shot at this point, I think, because late game, you have no guarantee that Anduin comes anytime soon. You have basically no card draw. I think it's your only real shot. You need to get those backdoor victories at this point. Yeah. I keep looking at this and wondering w whether or not Twilight Acolyte into Cabal Shadow Priest yeah. to take the 2-4 would have been better instead. Like, <sighs> Well, you get to push two face this way. Yeah, that's true. You they draw a card. They would have had an extra minion on the board that way and it would have been an 8-4. But then there'd still be Divine Shields on Hoy's side of the board. I don't know. It's a complicated one. What if you get Divine... Uh, sorry, if you get Master Spelled then... I guess then your Alex Straza goes back up to yeah, the attack. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the thing. I'm, I'm, 
struggling to see why this was so much better. They drew a card this way, I, I guess. I, I am actually fairly convinced this was the way to go because, again, two damage to face is the way to go. They need to win this matchup quick, I think, with the way it currently works. And again, maybe their opponent doesn't have the clear. Maybe they don't have the heal and they can sneak a win. That's, okay. that's all they've got, I think, at this point. But clearly we can see there's going to be uh, hero power here and with it already being a full 10 mana combo for Exego with Holy Fire Double Mind Blast, no draws for lethal quite yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't believe, as like you said, both Mind Blasts were uh, discovered naturally from the deck instead of from the Shadow Visions. And even then, that would still only be 50. Mm, funnily enough, both players still a little ways off Dark getting there. Hungry 3 damage off lethal. But it's just not lethal, and they've got no way of developing more damage than that after. So I guess Primordial Drake? I do also hope that on stream that little Polish Windows update <laughs> alert popped up just so they know you're never truly safe <laughs> from the Windows updates. <laughs> Even when you least expect it, they come and get you. At least there was no sound that came with it. That's true. That is true. Would you care to give us an impression? No. I considered it strongly. Don't know. So close. I'll get you one day. I'm still afraid of Lorinda coming in and hitting me as well, <laughs> by the way. Just, just so we're clear here, I've had one eye on that door for the entire he has. game. It's true. He's been glancing up to the corner of the studio, like, at least twice a turn. I've lost all depth perception on the game because I've got one eye pointed up there, which obviously makes it very difficult to cast. I think he's still afraid of me because of the pizza comment. I wouldn't worry too much, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> I just got an, an, an anonymous tip <laughs> from a, a confidant <laughs> that Lorinda is in fact coming, but I think that might have just been production trolling me. Yeah. It was it was very creepy, though. <laughs> it was very creepy. I kind of wish that you heard it on stream, because now we just sound crazy, but that's fine. Hungry, however, just doing all they can to load up on this board because, again, Shadowy what have they got? They're, it's their only chance. They need to get this damage through to face, which at the moment, it's not looking completely ridiculous. This is a pretty scary board. There's no Psychic Scream to shuffle it back into the deck. And, you know, yes, there is a good amount of healing from Hoy, but maybe they don't see it. That's kind of what Exego needs to hope for here, that Shadowy Hoy just thoughts. slips and doesn't heal up his face here and that the damage can connect through. But even then, Hoy will know the numbers. He will realize without Anduin, 15 is the most damage you can do in a turn. Yep. And he will play around it. And it looks like he's going to play around it quite drastically, actually. Yeah. Uh, with Divine Him as well. Yeah, yeah. Whole bunch of healing. Well, the Divine Him also draws in three cards. Yes, exactly. Healing, drawing, this is perfect. Because but uh, by not shooting a whole bunch of pings to the face, it does mean that Hoy's game plan has been somewhat slowed in terms of the damage he's pushing forward, but he's he still has Alex Strauss. Alex Strauss exactly. There. He hasn't wasted any pings on face, if you want to put it that way. Which means, in theory, next turn, the ping to the, oh, the Alex to the face, and then the following turn, the Double Mind Blast would be lethal if Hungry had no healing. They do have their Holy Fire, though, so this game is still pretty close. Hungry are on the precipice to having a chance, but they haven't drawn Shadow Reaper and Arun. Did you just say precipice? Yeah, I did. Oh. Is that right? It's precipice. Just Well, there you go. <laughs> I love... You have so many, like, great little <laughs> words you almost get right. <laughs> because, like, you've read them once, or maybe you heard someone say it, but you actually have no idea how to say them. <laughs> I'm going to let Lorinda come now. <laughs> As back in this game, Denmark are still just in such a dominant position here. They've got the board control after this turn, I would imagine after, what, you can go Alex Straza, you could go... Twilight Drake with a couple of pings thrown around there as well, if you even wanted to. Yeah, just anything that locks down the board just shuts out any possibility of a big swing turn and a bunch of damage for Exego. I 
And what does Hungary have left? They, every metric has kind of gone wrong for them. Denmark clearly here thinking, can we just go Alex Straza? If they are met with uh, Shadow Reaper and win in the backswing, they don't have... They're not doing it. Because, I think it's because of Shadow Reaper and win, because their opponent could heal back up to, what, 22 with the Hero Power face first. Yeah. Uh, and then the Dog Mind Blast is nowhere near lethal. Yeah. Okay. And I think that's, like, maybe where it goes wrong. Ooh, and there it is as well. Ooh la la. Clearly, Hoi made the right decision there. And now... Again, Hungry in with a shot. I must consider. So what do they have to do on this turn? Do they, are they even allowed to play Shadow Reaper and win? It doesn't do all that much. They could heal up first, then play it. But that I'm kind of looking at this where they have to go for Cleric first just to try and draw some answers because this still doesn't do enough. They need to, like, Psychic Scream this board back into their opponent's deck, then follow up with Anduin after their opponent plays Alex Straza because they need that kind of big tempo swing or some kind of mistake from Ahoy where they can actually seize this back. But... I mean, I think we've both got to agree. So far, Hoy has not been making those mistakes. No real avenue for Hungary to uh, find a victory in this game. It's been a really weird game. Like, you'd think with Denmark drawing Shadow for Anduin so early, they would have uh, had the game in the bag by now. But they weren't quite able to steal the damage they needed to. And now, with Exico drawing his very own Shadow for Anduin, even then, like, Hoi kind of has been making the best plays available because obviously if he could have killed his opponent on over two turns every single time, you take it. But Priest has healing, they have uh, board clears, they have Anduin to go for big Alex Straza removal. And Denmark kind of just been locking out any possibility that Hungary win. Because I was saying, Hungary have to go for some kind of a really niche backdoor victory where they can just go for double Mind Blast Holy Fire after Denmark make a mistake. But Denmark have been shoring up their game plan every step of the way, not even giving the slightest chance for Exego to take this back. Hmm. It, it's getting to the point now where I think you could start to make the argument that they should be playing more aggressive, but they kind of are, right? Like, they're getting damage into face now. As soon as board is theirs for a single turn, they will play Alex Straza, and they will just win the game from there. Because while they have other minions on board, Alex Straza becomes way better because their opponent can't go for Shadow Reaper and win because then they take, what, seven damage here in the meanwhile? Mexico just cannot quite get this grip on the board. Mm. That's one That's one area in which Hoy has been leading this entire game. Hoy has had things on the board yeah. a lot more often than Exego has. So Denmark have had control of the game in that respect and continue to have control of the game in that respect. And that is not through chance. This comes right back to turn three when they played Acolyte of Pain, which forced their opponent to go Dustbreaker, which meant they got the first big Twilight Drake in play and then just continued to attack, heal, attack, heal. It took a long time before Exego was actually able to deal with that at all. And here, they're starting to make plays that just look really lackluster, throwing away their Holy Fire to clear up the board, playing a Twilight Acolyte as a 2-4. These are not winning plays. These are desperate plays. But when you are one game away from being eliminated yeah. from the Hearthstone Global Games, you take any chance you possibly can to win this game. I'm not saying Hungary are doing anything wrong here. It's just been so brilliant play from Denmark. How bad a situation is it for Denmark here to just play Psychic Scream? So they play Psychic Scream. So what, you shuffle three pretty bad cards to draw back into your opponent's deck, which is good. They've played Alex Strazis. You don't really need to worry about that. Yeah. There's still a couple of dragons which could come down, I think. Like, is there one more Primordial Drake uh, for Hungary? There's obviously two uh, in the deck, but one's definitely been played. Um... But you're not going to do it. Like, do you need to? They do want to start being more aggressive now, right? Yeah, I guess. I was just thinking Let maybe that would then 
you know, then shut it yeah. And when would come down, then Alcatraz could come out on yes. the side. Uh, the shuffle is valid because the deeper they can push their Shadow Reaper Anduin into their opponent's deck, the safer they feel. Obviously, we can see Anduin's been drawn. Hoy, however, does not know that. So, you know, Psychic Screaming is worth considering. But I think he's realizing now you actually have to force your opponent to Psychic Scream or they're just going to die. Because if board control is not decisively won on this turn, or, I don't know, say a massive taunt put down in the form of Primordial Drake, Alex Straza comes down and the game's over. There's that second Primordial Drake you were talking about, which doesn't really do enough now on this board. If Denmark had played the Psychic Scream, then yes, it would be a dominating presence. But now, again, Exico running out of desperate plays to make. It's actually not bad here, I don't think, on this board. Like, I think it, it kind of has to be the play. It pings a, pings the Dustbreaker or something, or pings the Toilet Acolyte. Wait, well, he doesn't have ping yet, even, because he doesn't have oh, Shadow Reaper. He hasn't played it play. yet, even. Um, so, but what it does is it means your opponent has to trade in their entire board into this, so Alex Straza becomes significantly weaker once again. Um, because if Alex Straza hit face and all the damage went through to face on the following turn, that obviously means you're dealing more damage and Anduin does not clear off the entire board. So that would have been absolutely massive for Denmark. Um, but this is kind of the one uh, chance Exego had to not die immediately, because again, if this hadn't been drawn, Alex Straza would have come face and the game would have ended. Yeah. But he's able to deal with this Primordial Jake really easily. And again, the fact that he's had this hand in down for such a long time, he can squeeze in these hero powers so easily. Yeah. Just go ping, Pyromancer, ping, trade in the Cabal Shadow Priest or something simple like that. I think I like the, yeah, the Divine Spirit here. Oh, sorry, the Divine Hymn. Yeah. You can heal your minions back up so nothing even dies to Anduin pings or any of that nonsense. That's amazing. And you've seen Alex Straza, so healing back up to 30 <laughs> feels great. Could even go Pyromancer ping again and just trade the Twilight, Ac Twilight Acolyte in and uh, leave the healthier minions alive. Yeah, you don't want to be... Or cleric. Roaring anymore, right, with uh, Cleric Shadow and Pyromancer. And no. A little bit more vulnerable to Psychic Scream, but then again, like, Psychic Scream is just more stuff in your deck at this point, right? Hungry <laughs> just gets like, all, of, all of their healing now. I mean, it just has to be Anduin now, right? Yeah. Yep. You got the ping, but I think at that point... Uh, you're taking 5 damage, which means all your armor is chipped away. You are sent down truly to 15 health after Alex Straza comes down, as I have to imagine it will. There's no immediate answer to it unless a dragon is found. Even then, it's still a 2-8 on the board. 16 damage next turn should close things out for Denmark. They can heal up back to 27 again with a double Twilight's him, though, after the uh, Alex Straza. Again, and they need to what? deal with yeah. the Alex Straza. That's the most important thing. And even then, if they go Twilight Acolyte double him, that's seven mana, so they only have one ping, which clears nothing. So they take seven damage on the following turn, uh, assuming the Alex Draza has its attack stolen, obviously. <sighs> yeah, well, that's the. Wild Pyromancer is not a dragon, in case you were wondering. <laughs> Thanks for the. clearing that up, Falk. So. Ping the Acolyte, Divine Him, Ping Shadow the Acolyte, <laughs> Divine Him. Again, he's on 27, but there's an Alex Strauss on the board as Japan have eliminated Austria from the Hearthstone Global Games 2018. Goodbye, Austria. They put up a great fight last year. Hopefully, they'll be back again next year. Just knocking him down like Dark flies this is. week. So many teams going. Finland gone. Um, Austria gone two pretty uh, respectable yeah. European teams already eliminated two more the global games. Two more elimination matches happening off stream later on as well. Yep. Belgium, Israel and Canada still back here. As well as this match right here. Someone's going home at the end of this game. It looks a lot to me like it is going to be Hungary, but it's Hearthstone. As, yeah, with the Alex Straza sticking here, I believe I was correct as the double Mind Blast Lethal can just close things out yep. here. And Denmark, who have been in control of this game right from the get-go, finally lock things out and straight up knock Hungary out of the global games. That does it. Hungary have fought long and hard in this tournament. But sadly, they will be amongst the first teams to leave here in week four. 
Sorry to the production team for losing one of your picks, and sorry to Hungary, but congratulations to Denmark. They have managed to stay in the tournament for one more week. They're still going to need to get at least two more wins, though, if they want to be making it into the next phase of the tournament. So still a long road ahead. And while I think it would have been... Uh, what, sorry, while it was sad to see Hungary go at that point, to, to have seen Denmark, such a strong team, leaving the global game so early, would have just been a real tragedy. So I have to say, I am excited to see more from them and a good performance today. I agree. Let's take a look at the games one more time that we just witnessed. And there you go, the shape of the series as Hungary got the strongest start, but then Hoy, Fred, oh, the Hoy brothers actually between them managed to get three wins and take Hungary down. Great performance. Again, winning that unfavored matchup in game two, the Paladin versus the, the Warlock, was probably the big turning point of the series. That really evened it out and gave Denmark a chance. Yeah, what did you think? Uh, I mean, I am thoroughly impressed by Denmark. They came into this looking somewhat unfavored, even though it was a lot of even uh, mirror matchups. Just the one in the middle being the real turning point uh, where they had to beat uh, the uh, Odd Warrior with their Malagos Druid, which they did not even manage to do. Yeah. But still, they're winning the unfavorable matchup of Odd Paladin versus Evenlock. Really was, like you said, the turning point of that game. And still, just some beautiful play in the last game. I agreed with pretty much all their decisions with the Control Priest. And yeah, looking still to be a very strong contender here in the global games, despite the fact that they are, what, now two and two? Yeah. I mean, again, it was it was a lot of the, the Hoy brothers sort of showing off their strengths. Nikolai Hoy being able to get that win with the Odd Paladin, mm. a deck which, as you said, he was very adept with. And um, Frederick Hoy winning with the control decks later on. But now it sounds like we are going to have a chat with Crane, who is joining us in the studio. Crane. Yeah. Crane, hey. congratulations on your win. Uh, that got a little bit dicey there. How was the team spirit as you got into that last game? Were you concerned at all? Uh, concerned? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's a mirror match, so, and if we lose it, then we're out. So, it's, con but, I mean, we were positive the whole way through, even though we were down. We kind of, we've been kind of getting used to uh, being in dire situations so far. Yeah, that's fair enough. Now, you said to me um, just before you played your games today that preparing wasn't too difficult. You just, you know, net decking is still net decking. But you did admit that you didn't have as much experience maybe playing all of the decks. Is it difficult at all preparing now after the expansion? Like, is it more challenging than it was before? Well, it's just a matter of time, right? You don't have time to play nine new decks and you yeah. don't start out with the perfect list. So basically, it's impossible to have as much experience as when a meta game has, you know, been established for a month or two, where you simply you just have more time to have played with every deck, and you get more experience playing against those decks as well. So, just, uh, yeah, I mean, the net decking part was also a little bit of a joke, of yeah. course, because <laughs> but it's like you you look you talk to other players, you you look at what people are successful with, and there are people that you trust, you know, that the sky what he does usually makes some sense so you steal ideas you borrow ideas and you kind of make your own tweaks to them uh, and i wanted to ask you about uh, the communication within your team because uh, we saw when you were piloting the odd paladin at the end of one of the turns you roped out you didn't play the maul or the hero power there um and i wanted to ask has communication been an issue for you at all in your team do you feel it's feel like it's something you're good at or that you need to improve on uh, so on that turn, we just kind of disagreed on whether we should hero power or play the divine shield weapon. Mm. It ended up being really good because they had the doom pack. Yeah. So I think it, it was just, you know, you have two different opinions. So we ended up missing the, the hero power. I, I think it's always up to the pilot to overrule and, you know, make sure that he, you know, he makes the play. Mm -hmm. So... You know, that's, that's, but communication has been good in general. It's just that it's difficult to be 100% perfect because you don't always agree and you only have 70 seconds or how, I think it's 70 seconds. It's really not that much when you have, if you have four different ideas. Yeah. Thank you very much, Crane. Congratulations one more time to you and your team. Still got a long road ahead of you, but you have definitely got a good shot of making it. We'll see you again next week.
Chipper is always young Crane, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> I mean, it, it was a long series, these guys. Just yes. We did go all the way to game five, so it's only fair that we give them a chance to have a little break and, and cool off a bit. Let's take a look at some of the highlights of the series that we just witnessed way back when game number one. It was oh, a hunt wow. mirror. I barely remember this. What though. a long time ago, yeah. As I mean, Crane, uh, you can see why he might be somewhat put out after this game. There was just absolutely nothing he could do, to be honest, on this uh, game. His opponent got the Keleseth, they got their Egg, and they got the Deathstalker Rexar to follow up. Not that it was even needed after that pretty sterling performance. Uh, but then it started to turn around for Team Denmark with some very nice play through this odd palette. And aside from that one blip that I mentioned due mm -hmm. to communication issues, um, it was a, a very well-played game, I think, and led to a well-deserved victory, which, if they had lost, would have clearly just meant they lose the series and are eliminated from the global games. When Shridex dropped that Ledge King earlier on, it really looked like he managed to stabilize, but it goes to show, I think, the power of Vine Cleaver and just how much damage these little, little chunks can deal in the long run as uh there we go it was lethal very soon after that with the level up and the blessing of might which have been held on to for quite a while there and nikolai hoy taking that one down yeah very nicely done indeed but the next game was kind of from the outset again for denmark not going to be going all too well they did have a few interesting decisions to make along the way like when they go all in with their arcane tyrants to push some damage when they go all in with their naturalizers as we're seeing right now for very underwhelming minions just to push that damage through to face, which did have the benefit of completely eliminating Exego's armor total. They actually damaged the warrior before the end of the game. Uh, but then finally we can see it just really didn't come that close and they were defeated by the sheer amount of armor. Then there was the this matchup the other way around, which didn't take nearly as long as the one earlier as Hoy played this pretty aggressively, actually, with the Mountain Giant on turn four rather than a board clear. And there you go, that Hellfire, that second Hellfire wasn't even played. Yeah, and, you know, looking at that game even closer, with Denmark being on five health and uh, the Hungarian's decision to play the Righteous Protector to just give lethal with Defyo, I do start to question that even more heavily now that I actually remember how low Denmark were in that game. But again, we are finally getting to see the ultimate moments in this series when Denmark, after spending the whole game playing super safe, making sure there was no way their opponent could get surprise lethal, pulled it out of the bag and just gave a very strong performance in that final game. That was a great series, though, and I think that the more deserving team did win, for sure. Apologies to Hungary, but we'll be seeing more of Denmark. Next up, Derek, we actually have one of your picks. We have Ooh. Team Germany versus one of Raven's picks in South Korea. So next up, Germany versus South Korea, coming up.